Chapter 2651 Star Tree On a ship that was headed to the Andromeda system, a crystallizer woman turned to a man next to her. She looked afraid. Are you a crystallizer? She asked. Yes, the man said with a nod. He sounded rather cold. The woman looked very surprised, and she said, I can't believe I have met someone of the same race here. My name is Lydia. You took the Hall's quest to venture to the Andromeda system to hunt Xenogeneix, didn't you? Yes, the man answered. His emotions didn't seem perturbed at all. That is great. Can we combine forces and do it together? The woman said. No, we cannot, the man answered. The woman seemed disappointed, and she said, that's fine, I guess. What is your name, anyway? Can we exchange phone numbers? There are too few crystallizes here. We can contact each other. No, we cannot, the man said. His face remained impassive. The woman had spoken nicely to the man, but the man hadn't reciprocated by the smallest amount. He never gave her a reply that was greater than three words. After they arrived in the Andromeda system, the ship's passengers spread out as they headed to the various planets. The man got off the ship while the woman followed after him. Why are you following me? The man asked, turning around and looking at Lydia strangely. It is because, in this universe, a crystallizer woman meeting a crystallizer man is a one in a billion chance. I don't want to miss out on such a rare opportunity. So, please, tell me your name, Lydia responded, lowering her head and mumbling quickly. She spoke in a volume that only dogs could have discerned. Edong Mu, the man finally spoke his name. Lydia looked very happy to hear that. She raised her head, wanting to tell Edong Mu something. But as she opened her lips, before she could speak, Edong Mu's dagger slammed through her heart. Why, why, Lydia couldn't believe what had just happened. She stared at Edong Mu with shock. She couldn't believe the man would do something like this to her. It is because I sense something dangerous within you. Edong Mu pulled his dagger back out of Lydia, sending the woman stumbling to the ground. He looked at Lydia's body, then turned around. He left and disappeared someplace into the mountains. Shortly after Edong Mu left, the lifeless Lydia opened her eyes. Weird flashes passed through her eyes, and she stood up like a wooden doll. At that moment, Lydia looked like a lifeless robot. Her eyes were wide open, but they had no focus. It was like lots of data was scrolling through her eyes. It failed again. Such a heartless killer. He killed a beautiful woman of the same race simply because he sensed danger. It is so hard to deal with this guy. After a while, Lydia spoke to herself. So annoying. I have now failed eight times trying to get close to this target. Another team failed to gain any information from him, as well. It is so hard to get information from others who have been in contact with Hansen before. Since when did the crystallizes become so strong? It looks like this investigation will become quite difficult. After that, Lydia's body suddenly collapsed on the ground. Her light faded, and she looked like a dead body again. Brother King, has anything special happened to you recently? Wang Yuhang looked at his phone while chatting with Xie Qing King. I made some new friends, Xie Qing King said, with a cigar hanging from his lips. He was reclined in a CEO chair. He looked really relaxed as he spoke. Me, too. But it looks like something happened with Han Senator. Is he in big trouble or something? Wang Yuhang said. Maybe not. Maybe they are just keen on investigating the boy. Otherwise, the people coming to ask us questions wouldn't be so gentle. Xie Qing King squinted while he spoke. Then, what are we going to do? Wang Yuhang asked. If someone is giving you free money and beautiful women, are you ever going to say no? It would be very rude, and you would be missing out. That would sadden the person making the offer. Of course, we aren't going to do that. Xie Qing King laughed. Tiki, that is what I thought too. Lin Feng, Tang Jinliu, and the others, as well. Can you please get in touch with them? Me being here is not a coincidence. Wang Yuhang laughed. Every day, Hansen remained near the lake and continued fishing out pages of the Xian Yellow Sutra. For some reason, whenever it was Bauer's turn, she always ended up with actual treasures, and every time Hansen fished, he ended up with a sheet of paper belonging to the Xian Yellow Sutra. This is so f king weird. Why can I only retrieve this Gino art? Page by page. Hansen wondered. He couldn't think of an answer. After all, anti-material worlds were difficult to explain. Common sense and logic didn't really apply to such places, and Hansen didn't want to waste time mulling it over. 
He just wanted to gather all the pages of the Xian Yellow Sutra as fast as he could. He was keen to find out what sort of geno art it was. A geno art that comes from the anti-material world. No matter how bad it is, it must be special, right? Hansen thought to himself. Suddenly, the triangle symbol on the small jade figure glowed. Hansen knew Exquisite was on her way over. He carefully synced his thoughts with the small jade figure. Find anything? Moments later, Exquisite teleported right next to Hans Sr. Yes, but I did not get any fish. The stuff I've been collecting is pretty weird, Hansen with a strange tone of voice. Underworld Lake is connected with the anti-material world. It is normal to fish up odd things. What did you get? Exquisite asked. I got some paper, Hansen said slowly. Li Yuzhen had seen these yellow sheets of paper before, so there was no use in hiding it. He had no choice but to reveal what he had found. Paper? What sort of paper? Exquisite asked with curiosity. Although anything could show up in Underworld Lake, it was rare to get something like paper. About that, Hansen was frozen. When he thought about the lewd content on the yellow pages, he didn't know what to say. Exquisite could sense what Hansen was thinking. So, she blushed and said, Never mind. You don't have to tell me. Whatever you get from Underworld Lake belongs to you. Even if you collect a deified treasure, it is all yours. When you leave Outer Sky, you can even take them with you. Thanks. Hansen pretended to be relieved. I thought you always wanted xenogeneic resources. I have found some for you already. How much you get will depend on your power, though. Exquisite said to Hans Senator she appeared rather mellow. What do you mean? Hansen asked, curious. Outer Sky has a star tree. The tree produces star fruit, and it is surrounded by powerful space xenogeneics. They are king class, at least. Of course, some can even reach deified. Now, you can collect the star fruit, but how many you can collect will depend on you. Chapter 2652, Headstrong Elder Hansen listened carefully as Exquisite explained the situation to him in more detail. The star tree was guarded by seniors of the very high. Every silkworm of the very high was allowed one chance to claim star fruit from its boughs. But how many star fruit could be collected would be determined by tests conducted by the aforementioned seniors of the very high. The test results correlated with how many star fruits could be obtained. Even if the results weren't great, a participant was always guaranteed at least one. Ten star fruits was generally the most one could receive. But the tests were highly variable depending on which very high senior was administering them. The personality of your particular administrator is very unique. If he likes you, he will only ask you a few questions. Then, he will let you claim seven or eight fruits. If he doesn't like you, he will give you a very difficult question. If you answer correctly, you will only be allowed a small number of star fruits. I hope the man will like you. Exquisite's eyes looked strange as she spoke. Is he often that unreasonable? Is there any point of a test if he just gets to decide regardless? Just make it a beauty contest or something, then, Hansen thought to himself. Exquisite could feel what Hansen was thinking, so she laughed. The star tree belongs to the uncle alone, who he shares the fruit with is entirely his decision. Being willing to share with those far younger than him is already a grand act of kindness. So, even if he gives you only one star fruit, you should still be appreciative. I see. That makes sense then. If there is items, then he can definitely dictate the distribution of them, Hansen said with a nod. This is just a small reward. My generation will soon begin testing silkworms in earnest. If you perform well when that happens, the resources you receive will far exceed the star fruit, Exquisite said. How long must we wait? Hansen asked. There are thirteen of us in my generation. Now, there is only one little sister who has yet to decide on a silkworm. Once she has made her decision, the test will begin. When Exquisite spoke of her little sister, her eyes glimmered strangely. Hansen's heart felt weird hearing this, too but he carefully kept his thoughts away from the subject. The little sister Exquisite was referring to was undoubtedly Lee Keir. Lee Keir won a dollar, so Hansen knew all about that. Let's go. We should head to the star tree. Exquisite placed a hand on Hansen's shoulder. Then, she teleported Hansen and Bao away from Underworld Lake. There were still many Xi'an Yellow Sutra pages left to collect, and Hansen wanted to carry on fishing them all out. But it was a long task that he couldn't rush. He would have to wait for the chance to fish again later. When Hansen saw the star tree, he was shocked. Its boughs almost blanketed the whole sky. It was like a big umbrella that formed a bridge between the land and the sky itself. 
Many pieces of fruit hung from the tree's branches. They looked like suns, and their light made the leaves of the tree shine like jade. It was so very beautiful, and Hansen squinted against the light. According to what Exquisite had told him, the test administrator's personality was quite strange. But his story was a legendary one. When a child of the very high was born, it would be put into one of two factions. One faction was responsible for reproducing. They were the ordinary very high, and they didn't practice the very high sense. Their personalities were comparatively normal, and they retained emotions like an ordinary person would. They were similar to Li Yuzhen. The other faction was the one exquisite studied with. They learned the very high sense, and at the end of their practice, their emotions were practically non-existent. Their strength and combat prowess, however, were the best of the very high. When a very high was born, it was decided which path they would take. This man was like exquisite. He practiced very high sense, and he had reached deified class with it. He had been only a step away from becoming a true god. But then, he destroyed his very high sense and started anew. Not even Exquisite knew why the man had taken such drastic action. But as he began practicing again, the Elder guarded the star tree and never left its side. Even the other very high didn't know what level he was at currently. Uncle. Exquisite brought Hansen beneath the boughs of the star tree and bowed to the roots of the tree. Hansen and Bauer looked in the direction she was bowing, and there, they saw a giant stone tree root. Despite being made of stone, the roots still seemed to be alive and growing. There was a gray-haired man of the very high sitting on it. The wrinkles in his face appeared rougher than the bark of the tree. His white beard reached the ground. He remained sitting where he was, his eyes closed. He was so old that he looked like he'd been petrified. Hansen wasn't sure what to make of the man's appearance. With the power of the very high, they could keep themselves looking young until the moment they died. Doing that wasn't difficult. He wondered why this man's face looked so old. Upon hearing Exquisite's voice, the old man opened his eyes. His eyelids were very wrinkly, too. He could barely open a small slit to see through. If one didn't look closely, one would never realize that his eyes were open at all. The old man looked at Exquisite. Then, he turned to Hansen and Bauer. With a rough voice, he said, It is Exquisite. Have you brought your silkworm? Is it the big one or the small one? His name is Hans Senator, he is a crystallizer, Exquisite introduced Hansen and Bauer to him. You selected a crystallizer? That takes a lot of courage, the old man said. He observed Hansen's body well. He started to say something more, but he suddenly saw a person teleporting in front of him. Uncle, the new man said, bowing to the elder. Li Yuzhen, what are you doing here? Hansen and Exquisite's heart asked the same question. Li Yuzhen, please wait aside for a moment. Allow me to help Exquisite Silkworm conduct the test. Then it will be your turn, the old man said, signaling him to stand aside for a while. When Li Yuzhen heard the command, he bowed to the old man and said, Uncle, if things are like that, why don't we conduct our tests together? Hansen and Exquisite, when they heard it, felt a shock. They didn't know what was going on in Li Yuzhen's mind to make such a proposal. When the old man heard this request, he went silent. Then he nodded and said, why not? We can save some time. Let us do the test together then. Exquisite was unsettled. Usually, ordinary very high silkworms conducted their tests alone, and people of the very high never had to undergo these tests at all. She was confused by why Li Yuzhen wanted to take a test as well. The old man seemed to understand what Exquisite was wondering, and so he said, I have to travel soon. Others have recommended that Li Yuzhen protect the star tree in my absence. If he can pass the test, he will be in charge of the star tree temporarily. Hansen felt lucky. It was good that they had come now. If they came when Li Yuzhen was guarding the star tree, there was a chance Li Yuzhen would deliberately make the test difficult for him. Chapter 2653 Star Beetle It really had been a coincidence that Li Yuzhen ran into Hansen at the star tree. He had only just received the order to go there and take the test. He was there to take charge of the star tree in its current master's absence. Li Yuzhen had received a piece of news that few others knew. Once the Star Tree's elder left on his journey, he might never come back. If Li Yuzhen took the Star Tree now, it was likely that the Star Tree would forever belong to him. That was why Li Yuzhen was so hyped when he arrived there. Watching over the tree temporarily wasn't a very important task, but becoming its permanent caretaker. But when he found Hansen already standing before the tree, he thought about how rude Hansen had been to him at the lake. He was just a silkworm, 
and even so, he dared to offend the very high second brother to his face. This was a chance to teach the whelp a lesson, or so Li Yuzhen thought. This wasn't an opportunity that he could allow to pass him by. Out in the rest of the universe, you might be some kind of generational prodigy. I can understand why you might believe you have a right to be so arrogant. But amidst the very high, you are lower than dirt. If you don't know that already, there is a high chance you won't survive your tenure with us. I'm just trying to be nice so that Exquisite won't end up being dragged down with you. Li Yuzhen smirked to himself. The old man then glanced at the tree around him and said, If this is the way that we're going to proceed, why don't you two remove the bugs from the star tree? Remove bugs? Hansen asked, raising an eyebrow. This massive holy tree needed insect extermination? That was surprising, to say the least. Because Hansen had just learned of the tree's existence, he didn't know that part of the tree guardian's job was to remove bugs from it every now and again. Otherwise, the bugs would eat and destroy the three's fruit. That was what Li Yuzhen would have to do if he took over the job, anyway. If Li Yuzhen hadn't been present, Hansen's challenge would likely have been something different. However, because of the unique circumstances, the elder had decided that this test would be appropriate for both of them. While we are performing this test, you cannot use treasure or any other special powers. You need to use your own strength to remove the bugs. And while you are doing so, you cannot bring any harm to the star tree. If you damage the tree, you will receive no reward. You will, however, be given punishment, the old man said warningly. Uncle, what kind of bugs are we removing? Hansen asked the old man politely. There is only one type of bug that dares come close to the star tree, the old man answered. It is called a star beetle. You will know them when you see them. I will give you a day. You will pass if you can remove 1,000 bucks. Each hundred you remove will account for one star fruit. Hansen was delighted to hear this. He had been worried that even if he did his job correctly, the old man wouldn't allow him to collect any star fruit. Now that he had been given terms and conditions, he could rest easy. This was the best way to conduct business. We start now. Tomorrow, at this time, you must return here. The bodies of the star beetles can stay on the tree. They will be cleared afterwards, the old man said. Hansen and Li Yuzhen bowed to the old man. Then, they both flew to the top of the star tree. Li Yuzhen looked at Hansen and used galaxy teleport. He vanished into the tree while Hansen had to continue flying up. The star tree was a goliath. Each star fruit looked more like an asteroid. Hansen flew as fast as he could, but it still took him an hour to get to the top of the tree. Li Yuzhen had started killing bugs a long time ago, but the tree was simply too large. Hansen couldn't see where Li Yuzhen was. So, he had to look for the bugs alone. Seeing the star tree up close, Hansen noticed that the star tree's leaves really did look like jade. The giant fruits were crystal clear. Because the old man's request was very strict, Hansen couldn't do any damage at all to the star tree. Therefore, he didn't dare touch the tree. He kept flying around it. Soon after, Hansen found a bug lying on a branch of the star tree. It looked as fierce as a dragon, and it was the size of an adult bull. Its armor was sky blue. The light coming from its shell shimmered and glittered like a tapestry of stars, and its face looked like the face of a stag beetle. It had eight claws, and it had a weird horn that was like a pincer. It looked much more polished than an actual stag beetle, though. Its body was crystal blue, and it shone. It was hard to imagine it was considered a pest. The old man had given him the order to remove the bugs without damaging the tree. Hansen looked at the bug from afar, but he didn't dive right in to kill it. He observed the bug with his purple eye butterfly first. Without a doubt, the bug was king class. Judging from its life force and presence, Hansen was able to predict that it was a third or fourth tier king. Such a creature wouldn't be difficult for him to deal with. Hansen wasn't in a rush to do anything. He looked at the bug and thought to himself, he said I cannot hurt the star tree. That means I cannot hurt it while I fight. I need to kill this bug in one blow so that it can't damage the tree itself by attempting to fight back. It's an empty type xenogeneic, so its body doesn't have an element. It is a xenogeneic based purely on raw strength. That means its shell must be extremely hard, far harder than those of xenogeneics of a similar level. Taking down a creature like this in one hit will be difficult, Hansen thought to himself. After observing the creature for a while, he was unable to discern any potential weak spots. Its entire body was clad in that starry shell. To kill the bug, Hansen knew he would have to break through that surface. If there are no weak spots, 
then I will just have to break it open with brute force. But using brute force will still have the same risks if I miss. If I don't kill the bug instantly, and it struggles, it will likely harm the bark and the leaves on the star tree, Hansen thought, continuing to observe the beetle intently. Li Yuzhen, meanwhile, had reached the tree one hour before Hansen had. And before he arrived, he already knew a lot of information about the beetles. Li Yuzhen knew their weak spots, and he knew how to kill them effectively. After finding a beetle, Li Yuzhen started taking it down. Li Yuzhen hadn't practiced the very high since, but the very high had many geno arts. There were many top-notch geno arts available to learn. Li Yuzhen was a king, one of the best within the very high, in fact. With many geno arts at his disposal, it wouldn't be difficult for him to kill a king-class beetle. The beetle's shell was extremely hard. Ordinary king-class fighters of the same tier would have a hard time breaking through its shell, but Li Yuzhen only needed a few punches to destroy the beetle. He moved with insane speed. Li Yuzhen had found a few dozen beetles to kill before Hansen had even reached the tree. Plus, when Hansen found the beetle, he didn't immediately attack. He stayed where he was, observing them for a while. By the time Li Yuzhen had killed a hundred beetles, Hansen hadn't even started fighting one. Why isn't Daddy doing anything? Bauer was holding Exquisite's hand and looking into a mirror while she spoke. The image in the mirror displayed both Hansen and Li Yuzhen. Li Yuzhen had already killed 100 beetles, but Hansen had yet to do anything. He is thinking about how to kill the star beetles, Exquisite said. What would he need to think about? Even Daddy's fingers are enough to crush those little bugs, Bauer said curiously. Exquisite didn't answer, but the old man said, He's thinking about how to avoid harming the star tree if he moves to attack the bugs. Chapter 2654 An Accurate Kill That Is Like a Surgical Incision Hansen spent several long minutes in observation before he finally flew forward to strike that bug. When he was close enough to it, he suddenly disappeared. When he reappeared, he was already above the bug's shell. God's wonder? Exquisite was shocked to see this. She was intimately familiar with the teleporting method he had used. Although he was only teleporting a short distance, the move was still impressive for a beginner. It was strange, though, considering she had only given him God's Wander a short while ago. If Hansen had become this proficient with it already, he was more than brilliant. His talents really were out of this world. Does he really have an eleven armor talent? Exquisite couldn't help but wonder. Hansen's body was unique. If the God Spirit Touch's result was genuine, it was nuts. Hansen teleported behind the Star Beetle but the star beetle didn't react. And then, Hansen pointed a finger at its brain. Ding. There was a small ringing noise, like a steel needle striking bone. It was barely even audible. And right after, Hansen pulled his finger away. The star beetle didn't struggle at all after the strike. It simply gave a tiny shiver. The beetle grew still again as if nothing had happened, but its life force was waning fast. It didn't take long for its flame to fully extinguish. The star beetle was in the same position as before. It was lying atop the branch, but if one looked closely, one could see a very small hole in its head that led down to the creature's brain. Xenogeneic king hunted. Star beetle. Xenogeneic gene found. A hunting announcement rang in Han Sen's head. What excellent powers of observation. That was a very strong ability. His body is evolving fairly well. Exquisite, I think you found yourself a decent silkworm, the old man said. He looked at Hansen with a genuine sense of appreciation for the young man's performance. Hansen's attack had been very good. What the elder admired most about the scene was that Hansen had taken the time to observe the creature before committing to action. He wasn't a reckless man whose body operated faster than his brain. Recklessness wasn't always a bad thing. If a warrior fought someone of the same tier, the fight was usually a matter of life or death for both combatants. Neither fighter would have the opportunity to spend time deliberating their actions. The body's first response was usually the most useful, but taking care of those bugs didn't require those instantaneous reactions. Hansen had no idea what the star beetles were before this day. He had only observed them for a moment before killing one in a single hit. He had managed to sever the star beetle's nervous system. It couldn't even react before it died. So, the damage dealt to the star tree was minimized. That was why the old man really admired Hans Sr. Li Yuzhen had known all about the star beetles before he even began this test, but his methods of attack were still obscenely rough. 
He wasn't dealing much damage to the star tree, but compared to Hans' sound, he was leaving a lot of wreckage in his wake. Hansen started to attack more of the star beetles. He teleported and used his under-the-sky knife skills. The knife silks he controlled were as accurate as a surgical blade. His strikes would pierce through the beetles' shells and sever their major nerve pathways. Under such precise attacks, each star beetle died without the chance to fight back. Star beetles were falling to Hansen one after another. Hansen was like a skilled surgeon. Each cut he made had the precision of a razor. He was able to kill a hundred star beetles without missing once. None of the beetles stood a chance of resisting. The old man was shocked. Exquisite's eyes were glued to the video. Her mind was also connected to Han Sen's mind, and it was as if she was with Han Sound, killing those star beetles right then and there. That was the benefit of having a silkworm. She could share a bond and feel the same things as her silkworm did, thereby learning and experiencing something that she wasn't familiar with. It was a learning experience for her, too. As Hansen went from king class to deified or even further, Exquisite wouldn't level up with him. However, she would feel his evolution process as if it was happening to her. So when she became deified, she would have all that experience. It was like she was being reborn, and there was no need for her to worry about going along the wrong path. The king class star beetles were nothing compared to Exquisite. She could kill them with ease. Being as accurate as Hansen and obliterating a beetle's nerves so that it couldn't even struggle, in addition to the fact he was killing so many star beetles without making a mistake, Exquisite couldn't have done the same. Exquisite could feel Hansen's reactions, and that was what shocked her the most. Hansen's simple finger attack looked easy, but before he did it, he used a lot of predictive powers. He calculated everything that could happen while he was performing the strike. Even a straight strike had many potential ramifications depending on its speed and power. If Exquisite hadn't been able to feel what Hansen was thinking, she never would have guessed that there were so many complicated calculations running through his mind. This guy's power is so strong. It is something you rarely see. Even those of us with the very high sense aren't capable of insanity like this. Exquisite's emotions were quite conflicted. The more she studied Hansen, the more she believed him to be a scary person. Hansen no longer looked like he was fighting. It was more like he was finishing work that was supposed to have already been finished. He didn't have to worry about much because everything was under his control. Sharing Hansen's mind allowed Exquisite to learn a lot, but it also made her feel even more conflicted with facing Hansen now. The very high were quite full of themselves, and that carried through strongly in how they treated their silkworms. The masters often acted high and mighty. Right now, Exquisite was feeling the complete opposite. The more she learned about Hansen, the more she thought Hansen was scarier than she was. Xenogeneic King Hunted. Star Beetle. Xenogeneic Gene Found. Obtained Star Beetle Beast Soul. After Hansen killed a hundred Star Beetles, he earned a Star Beetle Beast Soul. He looked into his Sea of Soul, and he immediately noticed that the Star Beetle Beast Soul was an armor type. That didn't surprise Han Senator he had guessed that the Star Beetles would drop Armor Beast Souls as soon as he saw them. Armor Beast Souls aren't bad. When I take control of the Constellation Sea, I can build a human army. At that point, Beast Souls like this will definitely prove their worth. Hansen thought about a human army decked out in Beast Soul armor. It would be a shocking sight. It would be great if there was a deified class Star Beetle Beast Soul up for grabs, Hansen thought to himself. This was merely a random thought, of course. He didn't think he would actually have to fight a deified star beetle because the old man said he wouldn't be allowed to use Geno treasures. He didn't have enough power to kill a deified Xenogeneic on his own yet. Hansen flew around the tree, searching for more star beetles to slay. He eventually heard a buzzing noise in his ear. The sound seemed to be coming from above. Hansen raised his head and glanced through the gaps between the leaves. There, he saw a whole bunch of star beetles descending from the sky. They were all coming to the star tree. The leader of the star beetles had a body that looked like icy jade. It glowed with a blue light, which was a beautiful sight. The scary presence proved its identity as well. It was a deified star beetle. Chapter 2655, Deified Star Beetle This is exactly what I wanted, but this isn't the right time. I can't use beast souls to fight. I would have to use my own power to fight it, but I'm afraid that wouldn't be enough to defeat a deified star beetle. Hansen was troubled by this most recent development. Star beetles were very good at physical reinforcement. 
Even a primitive deified beetle would have a shell that was considerably harder than most primitive deifieds. Even if Hansen could make use of his peacock sole robe or his six-core snake bow, punching through that shell would be no small feat plus. There was the added fact that he couldn't make use of those tools right now. Don't even think about tackling a deified star beetle. You are better off sticking with the king-class star beetles to get your star fruit. Hansen continued looking around for star beetles to slay. He didn't know where the star beetles had flown in from, but there were indeed many of them. Hansen had been worried that the tree might not have 1,000 star beetles for him to kill, but now it looked like there were at least 10,000 star beetles descending on the tree. When the star beetle swarm reached the tree, they spread out and landed on its leaves, branches, and fruit. Their sharp teeth began to gnaw on the star tree. And while the star tree was very hard, their teeth were sharp and hard enough to leave marks in the bark. It didn't seem like a big deal now, but if they kept chewing the tree like that every day, it would only be a matter of time before the tree fell. Hansen continued killing all that he could. He slew many star beetles, and in three or four hours, he had brought down 500 of them. He had also earned three beast souls. It looks like I should be able to kill 2,000 star beetles before the timer is up. That means I will be able to grab 20 star fruits. But the star fruits are so big, how will I even cart them off? As Hansen pondered this conundrum, he felt something cold approaching his back. He immediately teleported away. After he teleported off, the deified star beetle reached his old position. It landed on a branch, and its small blue eyes peered at the newly repositioned Han Sr. Oh no, why did this guy come here? Hansen had deliberately avoided the deified star beetle as he moved on down the tree. He hadn't expected the powerful beetle to come after him and attempt a sneak attack. Hansen didn't have much time to think about it. The deified star beetle was attacking him again. Its blue body became lightning that zapped its way forward to reach Han Sr. Hansen wasn't fast enough to dodge the beetle's charge with speed alone. He teleported away again. He put some distance between himself and the deified star beetle. He didn't stop there, either. He teleported again to get even farther away from his attacker. But the deified star beetle wasn't keen on letting Hansen off the hook. It continued to use its blue light to try to attack him, and Hansen's teleportation skills weren't taking him far enough away. He couldn't shake off the star beetle. Every time Hansen appeared out of a fresh teleportation, the star beetle was coming for him like a beam of blue light. Hansen had no choice but to continue teleporting. He no longer had enough time to continue killing star beetles, as his focus rested on dealing with his new deified foe. Hansen couldn't help but frown. Because he was being pursued by the deified star beetle, he was missing out on any chance to kill the average star beetles. If he didn't kill 1,000 beetles, he wasn't sure if the old man would allow him to collect star fruit. Weird. Why won't this deified star beetle let me go? Hansen frowned. This creature seemed very driven to attack him. This is so strange. Why does this deified star beetle keep chasing Hansen? Exquisite was confused, too. Star beetles weren't very intelligent and even finding the star tree was a matter of instinct for the creatures. If their intelligence had been higher, they would have fled the moment they saw the old man sitting beneath the tree. Li Yuzhen laughed to himself. The moment the star beetles descended, he and Hansen both saw them. After seeing the deified beetle, an idea hashed in his mind. He didn't have the power to control the star beetle, but he didn't need to control the deified. He just needed to give the creature a target. Hansen was hunting the star beetles and wisps of the dead beetle's presence would be clinging to his body. Li Yuzhen merely used a secret trick to enable the deified star beetle to smell the presence of the exterminating Han senator it drew the deified fiend to Hansen exclusively. This deified star beetle's appearance has saved me a lot of trouble. I do still need to teach him that lesson, after all. I didn't even have to do this myself. Li Yuzhen stopped focusing on Hansen, and he returned his focus to killing king-class star beetles. Even if Hansen was able to escape the attacks of the deified star beetle, he wouldn't have the time to kill the king-class star beetles anymore. He wouldn't achieve 1,000 star beetle kills, which would keep him from earning any star fruits. The old man squinted, but his face didn't change. Li Yuzhen's trick had been done in secret, but it hadn't managed to escape his attention. Still, the old man didn't say anything. He cared very little about a grudge between two boys. He only needed someone who could effectively protect the star tree. For now, Li Yuzhen's performance hadn't been bad. 
His abilities were higher than others of the same class. He could scrape by and be labeled guardian of the star tree. The trick he used on Hansen had been unfair, but it was also another way of proving his power. Hansen knew things couldn't keep going on this way. He didn't have the time to kill other star beetles, so if this continued, he would fail the test. It looks like I can't get rid of it. In that case, I will just ignore it. Hansen's brain was spinning quickly. Exquisite was worried about Hansen, but what he did next shocked Exquisite even more. Still being chased by the deified star beetle, Hansen evaded the next attack, then headed toward a king-class star beetle. From the perspective of others, it might have looked like a coincidence. It would appear that when Hansen dodged, he had just happened to encounter a king-class star beetle and randomly kill it before teleporting away from the deified star beetle's next attack. It all played out so smoothly. It was like one grand move that happened to look like a coincidence. But Exquisite could clearly feel what Hansen was thinking. This wasn't a coincidence. Hansen was planning every move he made. In this high-speed chase, Hansen still had the power to plan all that. Exquisite knew his methods, but if she was in his shoes, she didn't think she could have pulled it off. The old man, as he watched Hansen's latest performance, looked stunned. Under the continued pursuit of the deified star beetle, Hansen took down another king-class star beetle. It was the same as before, and just as precise. The deified star beetle's attacks didn't seem to be hampering him significantly, and he maintained the surgical precision of his attacks. The king-class star beetles never had the chance to fight back, either, so they couldn't deal damage to the star tree. He is so young, and yet he is still so calm. He hasn't freaked out, and he has continued to do everything he has planned to the best of his abilities. This crystallizer really is a genius. You picked a tremendous silkworm, the old man suddenly said to Exquisite. Chapter 2656, Who Will Take Care of I? As Li Yuzhen was slaying star beetles, he would occasionally hear the roaring of the deified star beetle. Not bad. He has been holding on for this long, but why hasn't he tried to escape the star tree? Li Yuzhen murmured casually to himself. He glanced in Han Sin's direction but didn't go towards him. The deified star beetle was pursuing Han Sin because Li Yuzhen had enhanced the presence of death around him. Li Yuzhen had killed many star beetles himself, though. The deified star beetle could smell that, too. Luckily, Li Yuzhen was far away, and he was using a secret skill to suppress the stench of death around him. If he was any closer, there was a chance that the deified star beetle would sense the presence of its fellow's deaths on him and go after him instead. So, Li Yuzhen stayed away from Han Sin's part of the tree. He didn't know that his plan to keep Han Sin from killing star beetles actually wasn't working very well. Hansen kept evading the deified star beetles' attacks, and all the while, he continued to kill the king-class star beetles. He was taking them down faster than Li Yuzhen. The old man underneath the boughs of the tree stared upwards in astonishment. The deified star beetle had been chasing Hansen for an obscene amount of time, attacking continuously. But even so, not a single speck of damage had been brought to the tree. Clearly, it was because Hansen was kiting the creature quite carefully. Otherwise, any of the deified star beetles' attacks could have hit the star tree and damaged it. That is very unique. The old man complimented Hansen even more. Although Li Yuzhen was very good, compared to Hansen, the elder thought he was a bit rough around the edges. It wasn't that Hansen was stronger, but there was a finesse to his performance that put him far above his opponent. Hansen might not have outclassed Li Yuzhen much in terms of power, but the way Hansen dealt with this problem was outstanding. Li Yuzhen, under the same circumstances, wasn't performing nearly as well. Exquisite, can I borrow your silkworm? The allotted day had almost passed when the old man asked Exquisite a serious question. What do you mean, uncle? Exquisite had an inkling of what the elder meant, but the possibility didn't seem realistic. I would like him to spend a year guarding the star tree for me. If I'm not back in a year, you two can take ownership of the tree for me until I return, the old man said with gravity. Exquisite stared at him. She couldn't believe the old man had come to this decision. Allowing a silkworm to guard a star tree, or even get half ownership of it, was something that had never before happened among the very high. Uncle, are you sure you want him to take care of the star tree? Exquisite couldn't believe her ears, and so she had to double check. Yes, I have thought about it a lot. He really is the best choice for this. Are you willing to let him stay here for a year? The old man answered with certainty. If you really have made this decision, then I would like that, Exquisite stuttered. 
unsure what to make of this strange turn of events. Hansen was a silkworm. She should be helping him collect resources, but now Hansen had been given authority over the star tree, and if the elder didn't come back in a year, Hansen and Exquisite would be allowed to take control of the star tree completely, half and half. For Exquisite, the star tree represented incredible wealth. Outer Sky was rich in resources, but it was a very dangerous place. With the rules of the very high, after she got a silkworm, she had to gather resources on her own. Collecting resources would be very difficult for her. The star tree was different, though. All you had to do was pick the fruit. The Xenogeneics inside weren't as dangerous as the deified Xenogeneics to be found out in the wilds, either. The time limit approached. Due to Han Sen's teleportation distance being too short, he was unable to go straight back to the base of the tree. So, he left the tree an hour early to reach the old man on time. The deified star beetle stopped chasing Han Sen after he left. It didn't want to leave the star tree. Li Yuzhen didn't hear the deified star beetle anymore, so he knew Han Sen had finally left. What was the point in holding on until now? He let himself get chased around by a deified xenogeneic for most of the day. There's no way he actually finished the elder's test, Li Yuzhen said as he continued killing star beetles. After an hour, when the time was up, he teleported back to the old man. Because Hansen was flying back, he reached the elder at the same time as Li Yuzhen. Uncle, I killed 2416 King Class Star Beetles. Did I pass the test? Li Yuzhen bowed before the old man. The old man nodded and said, Little Crook taught his student well, it would seem. Although you haven't practiced the very high since, your power is no worse than those that do. Li Yuzhen was exuberant after hearing this. Being complimented by an elder like that was something to be very happy about, especially for Li Yuzhen. Plus, the elder sounded very satisfied with his particular performance. Li Yuzhen was certain now that he would be taking over the Star Tree's guardianship. I knew this was supposed to happen. I really was always the best choice. Otherwise, my teacher wouldn't have recommended that I come here and show you what I've got, Li Yuzhen said with a wide, grossly self-satisfied smile. The old man paused, and then he said, But, I have already found someone to take care of the star tree. Please convey my thanks to Little Crook for his assistance. Li Yuzhen had been feeling super cocky moments ago, but upon hearing this, he thought something was wrong with his ears. He must have misheard the old man. Uncle, you said you have already found someone to take care of the star tree? Li Yuzhen hesitated to ask this, but he still did. He knew it was bad form to question an elder but Li Yuzhen was at a complete loss. If the elder had already selected someone, why would he bother going through the song and dance of this test? It seemed pointless in retrospect. The old man nodded. In his old, rough voice, he said, Indeed, I have found someone who is more suitable to take care of the star tree. I apologize for inconveniencing you, but you may feel free to take ten star fruits with you on the way out. That will be my apology to you, as an elder, for making you come here for nothing. You brought me here for nothing? Li Yuzhen didn't know how to react. What did this have to do with the person he selected? The old man then pointed at the returning Hansen and said, I have decided that he will be the one who is in charge of the star tree. What him? Li Yuzhen looked at Hansen with a gaze of utter disbelief. After everything that had transpired, he couldn't believe that Hansen was the one being chosen. The elder had selected a silkworm to be the star tree's caretaker. Hansen was just as shocked when he heard the old man say this. He hadn't expected to be the one taking care of the star tree, either. This had nothing to do with him, and he had only gone there for the star fruit. Elder, did you just make this decision? Li Yuzhen had been trying to keep a lid on his simmering anger, but he couldn't douse the flames of rage in his heart. So, he had to ask. He didn't understand what part of him was inferior to Han Senator the Elder had chosen a mere silkworm over him to take care of the star tree. And on top of that, Hansen hadn't even finished the task that the Elder had given him. Li Yuzhen thought Hansen hadn't slain 1,000 King-class star beetles. There was no way he had finished the mission. Chapter 2657 Li Yuzhen Does Not Believe I Yes, the old man knew what Li Yuzhen was thinking. After a brief pause, he said, Hansen did a better job than you. Therefore, he is better suited for looking after the star tree. That is impossible. I bet he didn't even kill 1,000 king star beetles. How can you claim he did a better job than me? Li Yuzhen demanded. He simply couldn't believe this. He knew Hansen had been chased by a deified star beetle the whole time. 
There was no way he could still have done a better job than one of the very high. Go take a look. You can find out for yourself. Instead of explaining, the old man gestured absently up at the tree. Li Yuzhen had received a recommendation for this job. The old man didn't really care about Li Yuzhen's personal feelings, but he still owed the young man an explanation. Otherwise, others would question the choice. Hansen wouldn't earn the job properly, and people would speak ill of the events of the day. Instead of going and looking for himself, Li Yuzhen simply turned to Han Sr. How many King Star Beetles did you kill? 3,614, Hansen answered. Impossible. You were being chased by the deified Star Beetle. Even if you weren't, you couldn't have killed that many Star Beetles in such a short amount of time. Li Yuzhen's eyes were filled with disbelief. Because they weren't allowed to harm the Star Tree when they fought, they couldn't use Geno Arts that had an area of effect. They had to kill the beetles one by one with great care. Killing 2,000 in a single day was a shocking sum in itself. But Hansen claimed to have killed 3614. That was the sort of tally reserved for deifieds only. It should have been impossible for him to achieve that. And Hansen had to spend additional time traveling. So he had spent less than a day killing the fiends. Hansen smiled, but he didn't say anything. Li Yuzhen's face hardened. He teleported up to visit where Hansen had been. Quickly, Li Yuzhen found the star beetles that Hansen had killed. When he first saw them, he thought they were alive. It didn't look as if any damage had been done to them. But their life force was all gone. They were dead. Li Yuzhen frowned. He examined the body of the nearest star beetle and discovered the tiny wound on the star beetle's forehead. One hit to kill them by severing their nervous systems. That way the beetles had no time to struggle. That is both a very powerful Geno art and a remarkable control of power, Li Yuzhen murmured. But he didn't believe Hansen could have killed 3,614 star beetles. Geno arts that accurate could only be used in very favorable conditions, and executing a strike like that would be impossible while being chased by a deified star beetle. Li Yuzhen quickly flew around. He found many star beetles scattered around, all dead. There were many across the branches, many more across the leaves. They had all died of the same precise head wound. The damage had been inflicted with such accuracy that Li Yuzhen wasn't sure if he could do the same even if he had time to prepare. And if he was getting chased by a deified foe, he definitely couldn't have done it. After a short time of searching, Li Yuzhen discovered 3,000 star beetles. He then decided to stop looking. Han Sen's number was most likely correct and there was no way Hansen could lie to the elder about how many he killed. But now, Li Yuzhen believed Hansen must have cheated or made use of a powerful weapon. If he hadn't, there was no way he could have slain so many powerful king beetles while also being chased. He teleported back to the old man. Li Yuzhen bowed to him and said, Uncle, can I take a look at your video of the event? Sure, the old man said with a shrug. Li Yuzhen opened the video of the test. One side of the screen played Li Yuzhen's test, whereas the other was a recording of Han Senator, he didn't watch his own video. He focused on Han Sen's. He watched it at eight times the normal speed, examining how Hansen progressed in his killing of all the beetles. In the beginning, Li Yuzhen was trying to find evidence of Hansen cheating. But after watching for a while, Li Yuzhen's face slowly morphed into a mask of shock. Despite the hot pursuit of the deified star beetle, Hansen was able to continue hunting the king-class star beetles. Every time he killed one, he moved elsewhere. His progress was as fluid as could be, and there was a satisfaction to watching it all unfold. After watching for a while, Li Yuzhen came to the conclusion that the way Hansen killed his enemies was weird, but he hadn't cheated. Hansen had treated the deified star beetle like a doll, as if it was no more than a puppet on strings. Hansen lured it left, and it went left. He lured it to the right, and it went right. It followed him like a puppy dog. But Li Yuzhen knew the deified star beetle was no puppy. It was a skilled and dangerous fighter. Even if he used a deified treasure, Li Yuzhen didn't think he could easily kill it. Hansen hadn't used any treasures, and he was still able to play the deified star beetle like a fiddle. Li Yuzhen was at a loss. The way Hansen controlled his surroundings was vaguely reminiscent of a deified using the very high sense. Even so, it seemed different. Have you practiced the very high sense? Li Yuzhen asked Han Sr. Han Sen shook his head. I have never practiced the very high sense. I used Sky Palace's legendary knife skill under the sky. Exquisite nodded and said, Yes. 
He is known for his use of under the sky. Since Exquisite had just confirmed it, Li Yuzhen couldn't doubt it any further. Han Sin was exquisite silkworm, so his thoughts couldn't be hidden from her. Li Yuzhen was so annoyed. He had planned to teach Han Sin a lesson by beating some manners into him. But he hadn't taught Han Sin a lesson, and on top of that, the silkworm had claimed the guardianship of the star tree, a role that had previously been reserved for Li Yuzhen. Li Yuzhen really regretted it now. He regretted suggesting they do the test together. If he hadn't pushed it, he wouldn't have lost his bid to control the tree. After seeing the replay of Han Sen's battle, Li Yuzhen didn't say anything more. He bowed to the old man and left. He was far too embarrassed to stay. They were both ninth tier kings. Han Sen had been chased by a deified star beetle, and he had still managed to kill 1,000 more king class star beetles than Li Yuzhen. This result crushed Li Yuzhen. But when Li Yuzhen left, he took Han Sen's video with him. No one knew what he planned to do with it. According to the agreement, you can start off with 36 star fruit. Why don't I round it up and give you 40 then? The old man smiled, and then he went on to say, From now on, you are in charge of protecting the star tree. You can have 10 star fruits a month as a reward. You can take the ones for this month now. So, for now, you may take 50 star fruits with you. Hansen was delighted. It had been a long time since something this good had happened to him. He quickly agreed. He would only have to watch over the star tree and slay some bugs. That would earn him 10 star fruit a month. It was easy money. And killing the star beetles yielded a form of reward, as well. Exquisite explained the method for taking the star fruit to him. Hansen couldn't wait to start. He flew up toward the star fruits that looked like suns. Chapter 2658 Star Fruit The star fruit was like an asteroid, but that was just its outer shell. The core of the fruit wasn't nearly as massive. Inside, all kinds of Xenogeneics were bred. Every fruit contained different Xenogeneics. According to legend, the star tree was a shadow of the universe. Star fruit represented the stars of the universe, so each star fruit held Xenogeneics that were specific to the star system that the fruit represented. Thus, star fruit from a single tree could produce many different types of Xenogeneics. Of course, that was just a legend. The tree worked a little differently in reality but the star fruit really did produce different kinds of xenogeneics, and they were at least king class. Outer sky is an amazing place. If this star tree existed within the normal Geno universe, it would throw the entire universe into war. No wonder the very high never ask for anything or fight for resources like the extreme king. In outer sky, even though their race only has a few hundred people, their resources are seemingly infinite. After Hansen thought of that, he suddenly realized, Outer sky is between the real world and the anti-material world. Is this zone independent? If it is, that means that a few hundred very high are using a whole dimension's worth of resources. That is pretty awesome. Plus, outer sky has that underworld lake that connects to the anti-material world. They can get anti-material resources while still remaining connected to the real world. That suggests that the very high have connections to all three worlds. What could be better than that? But this didn't concern Han. Senator Han Sen hadn't been flying for long when Exquisite teleported toward him with Bauer. How long are you going to fly around for? Let me take you there. Exquisite put a hand on Han Sen's shoulder and teleported him to the top of the tree. Han Sen, eyeing each and every star fruit that was nearby, made his choice of fruit carefully. Exquisite told him the star fruit didn't really ripen, but the xenogeneics that were growing inside would make the shell turn dark red when they were grown. If someone picked a star fruit before that, the Xenogeneics wouldn't be fully grown yet. The creatures within would be low level. Let me pick a few and try my luck. Hansen couldn't tell what Xenogeneics the star fruits held. So, he didn't need to choose carefully. He found a nearby star fruit and flew toward it. The shell of that star fruit was already dark red. It looked like a setting sun, the light of which could still be seen as it slipped beneath the horizon. The star fruit was red like an orb of fire. Hansen flew to where the branch connected with the star fruit. Following the instructions that Exquisite had given him, he pressed his hand against it. And then, the giant star fruit fell from the branch. The star fruit that fell was falling quickly. It didn't have the sense of mass and gravity that Hansen had expected, though. It was actually very light. As the star fruit fell, the dark red shell started to melt away. It looked like a giant fireball that was burning furiously, sloughing off layers of itself as it went. The star fruit didn't release energy like you would expect from a fireball, though. 
It only took a second, and the shell of the giant star fruit dissolved completely. And there was a Xenogeneic curled up inside. That Xenogeneic looked like a flying dragon. Its head was near its tail, and its wings were folded close. Its body was covered in green scales. Judging from its long body and tail, it had to be at least 40 meters long. It looks very powerful. It cannot be a deified Xenogeneic. Surely, Hansen pondered, his heart thumping. Exquisite said the star fruits mostly contained King Xenogeneics, and very rarely, they would house a deified. But no matter what Xenogeneic it was, it would be low level when it emerged. It would be like a freshly born, first tier king, or in rare instances, it would be a primitive deified. But they progressed like ordinary Xenogeneics after that, of course. They could be grown. How much they grew would depend on their talent. Xenogeneics were woken from a deep slumber as they were freed from the core of the starfruit, so they were easy to kill as they emerged. Alternatively, the person who opened the fruit could allow the Xenogeneics to fully awaken. The very high had a special contract. If the Xenogeneics signed the contract, then it would basically become the pet of the person who opened the fruit. Of course, this process couldn't be completed if the Xenogeneic was hostile. If the creature resisted the contract, then it would remain dangerous and uncontrollable. That was why the very high generally activated contracts when the Xenogeneic inside the star fruit was still sleeping. Being asleep kept the creatures from resisting, granting a much higher success rate for the contracts. This should be an Aaron Dragon. It is a king class Xenogeneic. If it is given enough resources, the Aaron Dragon can be turned into a half deified creature. It is a good Xenogeneic to have, Exquisite said to Hansen as she watched the descent of the green dragon. Hansen was very disappointed, though. It was a meager king-class Xenogeneic. For Hansen, having such a creature would be practically pointless. Exquisite could sense what Hansen was thinking, so she said, it isn't completely useless. Star beetles migrate through space, and they only periodically descend to the star tree. If you guard the star tree yourself, you will have to wait for the beetles to descend before taking them all out by yourself. If you had some helpers, however, they could kill the star beetles before they even reach the star tree. Plus, you might need some help once you begin to travel around outer sky. I suggest you sign contracts with most of the Xenogeneics that emerge from the star fruit. Hansen thought that her suggestions were quite reasonable. The old man who originally guarded the star tree only let the beetles descend on the tree in mass because he needed them for Hansen and Li Yuzhen's test. If he hadn't, he would have thinned out the star beetles long before they arrived at the tree. Ordinarily, the star beetles wouldn't even have a chance to touch the star tree. The old man would kill them before they got close. But even if Hansen set up a defensive net of guardians, beetles would occasionally slip through the net. Hansen would have to kill those himself. And of course, the old man had performed the task easily, but he had been much stronger than Hansen currently was. If a large swarm of star beetles headed for the star tree, he would need some backup. Hansen looked at the sleeping Aaron Dragon. He knew it was going to wake up soon. He had to make a decision before then. If it woke up, he would be forced to kill it. It would be harder to force the creature into a contract once it was awake. Setting aside his hesitation, Hansen used the method that Exquisite had taught him and initiated a contract with the Aaron Dragon. When the contract was complete, a weird spell coalesced over the Aaron Dragon. The spell flashed repeatedly, waking the Aaron Dragon up. The Aaron Dragon spread its wings and unleashed a roar that shook the sky. Then, the beast looked down at Hans Sr. Hansen curiously sent a thought toward the Aaron Dragon, and the creature responded immediately. With a light flap of its wings, it lowered itself by Hansen's feet. Hansen stepped up onto the Aaron Dragon's back. Feeling good, he said. Having a mount will be pretty nice. I can use this guy like a transport ship. When I get enough resources from around Outer Sky, he can haul cargo for me. I still have another 49 star fruits to select. I hope I can get a few deified Xenogeneics. Hansen thought to himself. Then he turned and flew toward another star fruit. Chapter 2659 Luck is Broken. Hansen picked 10 star fruits one after another. Each Xenogeneic that emerged was a first tier king. The only differences between them were their breeds and their potential for development. Although creatures that came from the star fruits always started at first tier, the lowest king rank, they were still adults. Hansen could help them develop by providing them with resources, but there was a limit to how much they could evolve. Bringing most of these kings up to deified would be an impossible task. 
half deified was likely as far as they could go. He had yet to find a deified xenogeneic, and that alone disappointed Han Sr. Exquisite comforted him by saying, few of the fruit hold deified xenogeneics, so it isn't strange that you haven't found one yet. You still have another 40 chances, too. There is no need to rush this process. If your luck is decent, then one or two of your 50 fruits should hold deified xenogeneics. What she said was correct, but it still made Hansen depressed. Dad, Bawa wants to pick some fruit, too, Bawa said, looking up at Hansen and tugging at his clothes. Since Exquisite could feel what Hansen was thinking, Hansen was careful to keep his mind blank. He told Bauer, Okay, you can help Daddy choose some starfruit, then. Bauer was enthused, and she began to look around with wide eyes. Not long after, she pointed at a starfruit in particular and said, I want that one. Hansen picked up Bauer and went there. He flew to the top of the starfruit, and Bauer's hand touched the point where the fruit and branch connected. Then, the starfruit fell. Hansen watched the starfruit shell melt away. He knew Bauer always had good luck with things like this, so he was hoping to take advantage of Bauer's good luck to amass an army of deified fighters. The shell began to peel away, revealing the xenogeneic on the inside. Hansen looked carefully at the strange xenogeneic. Its body was very small, barely larger than Hansen's clenched fist. It had really big ears and a tiny, Q-shaped tail. The body was stout and circular. It looked like a fat, Little, pink pig. What is this xenogeneic? Hansen asked, looking at Exquisite. He could sense that the life force of the creature he had just discovered wasn't strong. It was just like the other xenogeneics he had selected. It didn't have the presence that a deified creature would have, either. And presence aside, it certainly didn't look like a powerful warrior. I don't know. I can't recognize every xenogeneic in existence, Exquisite said with a shake of her head. It looks like Bauer's luck doesn't always pan out in my favor. I thought she could get me a bunch of deified xenogeneics. Hansen couldn't help but sigh. Exquisite rolled her eyes. This man was actually using his daughter for his own gain. She had never seen someone this obscene before. There seemed to be no limits to his shamelessness. But Bauer seemed to really love the fat little creature, and she bent over and picked the pig up. She rubbed its fat body because it felt really good to touch. Dad. Can I have this little pig as my pet? Bauer asked Hansen while looking at him. Of course you can. Upon seeing that the little pig wasn't a deified xenogeneic, Hansen was fine with giving it to her as a pet. He had enough king-class xenogeneics as it was. Bauer was so happy to receive the creature, but she didn't sign a contract with it before waking it up. Exquisite twitched in shock. Bauer had woken the creature up without signing a contract. Xenogeneics without a contract were as dangerous as any wild xenogeneic. But after the little pig woke up, it showed no signs of aggression. It lifted its round body and started running around Bauer joyously. It looked very happy. Bauer picked it up, and the little pig didn't resist. It rubbed its face against Bauer's hand. Thank God it isn't an aggressive xenogeneic. Exquisite felt relieved. Bauer, continue. Hansen said to Bauer. Bauer nodded. She let the little pig go, and then flew to another starfruit. The little pig took off after Bauer, its bum wiggling. Bauer swiftly decided on another fruit. The flesh of the falling fruit sloughed away, and when the slumbering xenogeneic inside was revealed, Hansen and Exquisite were given a fright. It was another little pig. It looked exactly the same as the first one that Bauer had chosen, and it was the size of a man's fist. It was chubby, too. The two little pigs now looked like twins. Weird. Two different star fruits shouldn't yield the same xenogeneic twice in a row. Yet these two appear to be of the same race. Why has she found two little pigs that are identical? Exquisite looked at the pigs in confusion. Hansen looked at the two pigs, and he realized there was a difference between them. When he looked closely, he realized there was a white symbol on the forehead of each pig. Since the symbols were almost the same color as the pigs, the symbols were difficult to see unless you were very close to the pigs. The forehead spell that was on each pig was different, however. Hansen had no clue what they meant. Hansen looked at Exquisite. Exquisite shook her head. I don't know what this means, either. There are too many different kinds of xenogeneics. Perhaps this is one of the rare breeds. But judging from their presence, they should only be king class. And they aren't aggressive. Why is Bowis luck broken today? Hansen thought glumly. She had just discovered a pair of little pigs, and they wouldn't even attack. 
they seemed useless. They wouldn't even be useful as slaves. Bauer took the two little pigs with her to open up more fruit, and what happened next made Hans Sin an exquisite freeze in place. She found another little pig. Before Hansen could say anything, Bauer started jumping around the star tree. She kicked down many star fruits. More than a dozen of them were falling through the air before Hansen could open his mouth to protest. Exquisite quickly teleported over to Bauer to pick her up. The star fruits fell, burning like dying suns. They quickly dissolved and revealed the xenogeneics inside. Hansen and Exquisite's eyeballs almost popped out of their skulls. Inside those star fruits were more of the little pigs. The small pigs woke up fast. They opened their eyes as soon as their shells melted away. In moments, they were all merrily running around the first two pigs. They trotted next to Bauer, and they looked very happy. What is this? Even Exquisite's face was wrought with confusion. It was a single breed of Xenogeneic, yet there were so many of them. The star tree had never done anything like this before. Hansen and Exquisite looked over the pigs and aside from the spells on their foreheads, everything about them was the same. Bauer, you have collected so many pigs. You should let me open the rest, Hansen said with a strained smile. He'd been hoping Bauer would get him a few deified xenogeneics, but it didn't look like that was happening anytime soon. And at this point, Bauer could start her own pig farm. There were 16 little pink pigs running around. They all lined up around Bauer. Bauer didn't comment on what had happened, but she seemed very pleased with her choice of fruits. She didn't show any desire to pick more of them. Chapter 2660 Physiognomy I guess I'm on my own. Hansen looked around. He saw a star fruit that looked fairly pretty, and so he flew up to it. This fruit is very puffed and full. It does seem very rich. It is obviously a sign of happiness. It must surely have generated a deified xenogeneic. Those who studied physiognomy believed they could judge the personality of a person merely by studying that person's facial features. Hansen attempted to apply the same principle to the fruit, running his hands over its surface. Ha! Huh. Are you trying to read the fruit's physiognomy? Exquisite couldn't help but laugh. The very high had physiognomy skills, as well. But they had never thought about trying something like that on a star fruit, of all things. Humans have faces. Fruits have faces, too. If humans can receive physiognomies, then why can't fruit have a physiognomy? Hansen replied in a dignified manner. He actually didn't understand physiognomy. He had merely seen a reference to it in the text of the Xin Men. Hansen had barely glanced over the topic. He couldn't even be called a beginner. He couldn't actually read the face of a human, let alone of a fruit. Right now, he just needed something to reassure him that he wasn't making another blind choice. He desperately hoped to receive a deified xenogeneic. But God didn't give people what they wanted very often, and Hansen had thus far only been able to receive king-class xenogeneics. He had selected many fruits, but they all turned out to be kings. He could only use them for grunt work. So, overall, they wouldn't be very useful. After choosing more fruit, Hansen realized he only had two left. Upset by his disappointing results, he grabbed the two nearest to him and slammed them down. Bauer was useless now. Hansen could only depend on his own luck, and that wasn't working out well for him. The two fruits dissolved quickly, revealing the xenogeneics inside them. One of them was a wolf. Hansen immediately recognized that its presence was king class, but the other one made him quite happy for a change. It was a rock giant. It was in a sitting position, holding its knees. It was ten meters tall, and its body was entirely composed of black rock. It seemed to radiate strength. It looked like a little mountain, in many ways. A deified xenogeneic, can you believe it? Finally, I have received a deified xenogeneic. Feeling the mammoth presence of the rock giant, Hansen was thrilled. Exquisite felt relieved. One deified xenogeneic out of fifty fruits was an ordinary shake of luck. While the rock giant was still sleeping, Hansen quickly signed a contract with it. Outer sky was full of deified creatures, and having a deified fighter by his side would make life much easier for Hans Sr. Especially if he wanted to kill star beetles in the future, having a deified xenogeneic to help would save him a lot of trouble. Hansen brought his group of xenogeneics over to the old man. The old man didn't say much. When his gaze passed over the little pigs around Bauer, he seemed surprised. Uncle, I wonder what these little pigs are. Why did xenogeneics that are so similar come out of so many fruit? Exquisite asked. The star tree is a true god plant. 
The old man said simply. It possesses the energy of the universe. It isn't something that I fully understand. It has its reasons for existing, however. After that, the old man brought out another item to present to Han Sr. This is my token. You need to use it when you clear out beetles in the future. Every ten days, come back and take care of the star tree. Whenever a swarm of bugs arrives, you must make sure that you clear out each and every one. None of them can be allowed to live. Hansen bowed and accepted the item. It was a small stick. It was aqua-colored, and it looked like it was made from jade. The item had a very strong presence. It looked like a deified treasure. Hansen hadn't expected to receive a powerful item out of this deal, but he quickly took the jade stick and bowed before the old man. Do not worry, uncle. I will do my best to take care of the star tree until you return. You may leave now. Come back again in ten days, the old man said dismissively. Bauer and Exquisite joined Hansen as he turned to depart, but Exquisite was unable to teleport so many creatures with her. Even if she had used her small ship, there wouldn't have been enough room for all of those Xenogeneics. So, for now, Hansen left the creatures there. He would be returning to the tree in ten days, anyway. Bauer's small pigs were only a fist size, so transporting them wasn't difficult. Hansen pulled out a bag and stuffed all of the pigs inside it. He carried them to the small ship. You should let them out. They won't take up much space, anyway, Exquisite said. She could see the pigs writhing around in the bag in an obvious state of discomfort. Hansen realized that she was right. He released the little pigs and allowed them all to happily run toward Bauer, who was standing in the front of the ship. Altogether, they watched the majestic scenery go by. Do you want to go back to Underworld Lake? Or would you rather hunt some Xenogeneics? Exquisite asked Hansen as both of them rested in the back of the ship. Let's go back to Underworld Lake. I think it will be safer if I practice more with God's Wander before I begin hunting Xenogeneics, Hansen said. Sure. Exquisite nodded and delivered Hansen to Underworld Lake. Unless someone had space teleportation, they would have to use a ship like Exquisites to travel around Outer Sky. The ship had a special power buff that deterred the creatures in Outer Sky from attempting to break it. Not even deified elites could travel through Outer Sky on foot without trouble. And Hansen wasn't even deified yet. So, Hansen wanted to practice space teleportation so he could travel around Outer Sky with greater ease. He didn't plan on hunting down Xenogeneix yet. And of course, Hansen also wanted to fish up the rest of the yellow papers he had been in the process of collecting. That was the main reason he had asked her to take him to Underworld Lake rather than the wooden house. Exquisite could feel what Hansen was thinking, and it made her blush. She thought Hansen wanted to see more of the pictures on the yellow papers. She didn't know the yellow papers actually seemed to represent some sort of Geno art. They soon arrived back on the shores of Underworld Lake, but this time, Exquisite didn't leave. Instead, she remained to fish alongside him. That was quite frustrating. With Exquisite there, he had to control his thoughts. And that was no easy task. Even Hansen struggled to keep his thoughts in check. Hansen enjoyed practicing his Geno arts, and Exquisite got to experience everything that he learned as well. Although Exquisite had already learned God's Wander, watching Hansen practice allowed her to learn some new things at times. But Exquisite was caught off guard by Hansen's fishing success. Before she pulled out a single thing, Hansen had already managed to reel in a few items. But Hansen only seemed to be retrieving those yellow papers. Whenever Hansen looked at them, she could feel it. And every time he did, her face blushed. Bauer was now close friends with the small pigs, and she played with them nearby as Hansen and Exquisite fished. The pigs kept Bauer occupied. Otherwise, she would have been bored out of her mind. The little pigs continued to look passive and they didn't exhibit an ounce of aggression. While they made for nice pets, they were useless. Hansen felt a little disheartened every time he looked at them. After a few days, Hansen couldn't stand being watched by Exquisite anymore. So, he told her that he wanted to go to the core area. But Exquisite told him that Outer Sky was between the real world and the anti-material world. Due to the presence of space barriers, he couldn't enter the core area. Hansen tried it anyway, and he really couldn't enter the core hall's door anymore. Chapter 2661 Taking Care of the Star Tree In a garden on a mountain in outer sky, Li Yuzhen met with another very high man. They began watching the video that Li Yuzhen had taken, which showed Hansen slaying the star beetles. Li Xueqing, what do you think after watching this? Li Yuzhen asked, staring at the man in green clothing. He is very strong. 
He might even be stronger than a very high of the same level. Who is he? Li Xueqing asked, not taking his eyes off the video of Han Sr. He is the silkworm exquisite selected. His name is Han Sen, and he is a crystallizer, Li Yuzhen answered. I think exquisite is very lucky to have gotten a silkworm like this, Li Xueqing said with a nod. Li Yuzhen smiled and said, What does it have to do with us if she had good luck? To be straight with you, she is a very precious person amongst the very high. We, on the other hand, are just breeding machines. Seeing Li Xuecheng frown, Li Yuzhen said, After seeing this video, do you not have any opinions to share on it? What do you mean? Li Xuecheng frowned again. When Li Qir gets her silkworm, the fights between silkworms will start. There are 13 silkworms in total. So, which of them do you think is going to win? Li Yuzhen asked. From what I can see here, Hansen seems pretty good, but he is just a king class with nine tears. Most of the silkworms are half deified. One of them was even born deified. Judging from the power I have witnessed, I think the born deified is the most likely to win, Li Xuecheng quietly said. Your reasoning is sound, but I have analyzed Hansen and the other silkworms. Hansen is amazingly strong, and he has many treasures. He even possesses the true god weapon shield of the Medusa's gaze. I think he has a high chance of winning. After Li Yuzhen was embarrassed in the Star Tree contest, he had taken the time to investigate and learn more about Han Senator. He now knew more about Hans than most of the Very High did. Outer Sky had many resources, so the Very High never lacked anything. They only ventured out into the rest of the universe to find silkworms and people with peculiar talents. So, the Very High paid little attention to most of the races in the universe, and Han Sen was just a king. Even an ordinary deified wouldn't garner much attention from the very high. Li Yuzhen passed the information he had collected on Hansen over to Li Xuecheng. The file included a video of Hansen using the shield of the Medusa's gaze to turn Mang Lai into a statue. This actually happened? Li Xuecheng was shocked. He went quiet, and then he said, If this video is real, he does stand a chance of winning the battle between silkworms. It is just a chance, mind you. His victory definitely isn't guaranteed. After all, using the power of a treasure doesn't make you as good as a real deified. There is still a big difference in level. But if he can use a weapon like the shield of the Medusa's gaze, he might actually win. What if the silkworm fight bars the use of treasures? Li Yuzhen suddenly laughed. With his power, of course, he cannot challenge a genuine deified. The video demonstrated clearly that he couldn't kill the deified star beetle no matter how strong he was. His power is no match for a deified yet. His skill will matter little in the face of such absolute power. Li Xuecheng paused and said, But the fight between silkworms doesn't prohibit the use of treasures. It didn't in the past, but this time will be different. I have a reliable source with sway in this matter. This time, the silkworm fights will ban the use of treasures, Li Yuzhen said with confidence. Did your family member? Li Xuecheng seemed to have guessed something unsavory about Li Yuzhen. But before he finished speaking, he thought better of it and closed his mouth. Li Yuzhen smiled. You just need to know that this silkworm fight won't allow the use of treasures. That is all. Right now, there are only four people who know about this. And you, and I cannot tell anyone. The other two won't tell, either. But what does this have to do with us? Li Xuecheng still didn't understand what the other man meant. Did you forget? Li Yuzhen asked coldly. Silkworm fights are normally so boring but this one will be rather interesting. If you send out information about Hansen, do you think others will be like us and believe Hansen will win the silkworm bouts? That might be possible. After all, the born deified silkworm is just primitive. He is actually weaker than Meng Lai. With his treasures, Hansen would probably win, Li Xuecheng quietly said. As he spoke, his eyes brightened. He finally understood what Li Yuzhen had been implying all along. You want everyone to gamble and place their bets on Hansen, so you can take their money? Li Xuecheng's eyes flashed with interest. Yes. And after everyone loses because of their faith in Hansen, do you think they will be nice to him? Li Yuzhen laughed. You are so evil. You'll be ripping off many people with resources, people that Hansen might have to visit. If they don't like him, it might be hard for him to earn resources, Li Xuecheng said, understanding. I, Li Yuzhen, won't allow something stolen from me to remain stolen. Li Yuzhen chuckled darkly. Then he said to Li Xuecheng, they will soon announce that this silkworm fight will ban the use of treasures, so you better move quickly. 
We need people to place their wagers before the news circulates. This seems like quite the opportunity. Why don't you do this yourself? Why did you have to bring me into this? Li Xueqing asked, somewhat befuddled. I have a background with him, Li Yuzhen said, shaking his head. If I bet that Hansen will lose, people will grow suspicious. You don't know him, however. We can share this business half and half. You are right. With your relationship to Hansen, if you bet that he will lose, they will know that there must be something going on behind the scenes. Li Xueqing laughed and said, sure. Then it's settled. Information about Hansen soon spread across the very high. The very high became interested in him, aside from those that studied very high since, of course. They simply didn't say anything. Most of the very high believed Hansen had a chance of winning the silkworm fight, as a result. Li Xueqing was able to use this opportunity to make lots of wagers with the very high. The results were just as Li Yuzhen had predicted, as well. Soon after the last of the bets came in, the very high leader announced that the silkworms wouldn't be allowed to treasures in the bouts. Many of the very high thought Li Xuecheng had scammed them, and they hated Hansen. Too, things would be fine if Hansen won the silkworm fight, but if he didn't win, many of the very high would lose their money because of him. Even though Hansen was completely innocent in this scheme, he was affected. Hansen didn't know that any of this had happened. He continued fishing in Underworld Lake, and after ten days, he returned to the star tree. The old man under the tree was gone. Hansen took over the guardianship of the tree. He spent some time searching through the tree's branches, but he found no more pesky star beetles occupying the tree. It seemed as if the old man had cleared them before he left. The star beetle swarms come every two to three months. You don't have to stay here all the time. Only come when the bugs arrive. Then, you just have to kill them, Exquisite said to Han Sr. Chapter 2662, The Geno Art in Reverse Because Lee Kier had yet to select her silkworm, the silkworm battles were still being postponed. That went on long enough for the star tree to experience another bug invasion. It hadn't been very long since the beetles had last been cleared, though, so Han knew that there wouldn't be many of them in the swarm. He left the rock giant and the other king's Xenogenex near the star tree to safeguard it. Once he was assured of the tree's safety, he went back to Underworld Lake to practice and fish to his heart's content. Huh? Why am I not getting any more yellow sheets of paper? A month later, when Hansen was reeling in his next catch, he noticed that he had brought up a broken shield instead of the usual piece of parchment. That shield was old and broken. It was caked in rust. Hansen gripped it with his hand, and even a tiny portion of his strength was enough to crush it. What the hell? How did I fish up this piece of crap? Hansen thought, both disappointed and insulted. But then he thought to himself, if I'm no longer pulling up sheets of paper, does that mean I have finished collecting the last of them? Since Exquisite wasn't around, Hansen brought out all of his yellow sheets of paper. He lined them up according to their numbers and placed them within the cover. It really was a complete book now. 365 pages. That is a magically significant number. Starting from the first page, Hansen read the contents again. Usually, Exquisite was there. Whenever she was present, Hansen didn't dare to think or practice. He only practiced God's wander and very real body in front of her. Both of those were the Geno arts Exquisite had given to him herself. Having only those two techniques to practice had gotten quite boring, but now that he was looking at the Xin Yellow Sutra, his interest and vibrancy were coming back to life. This book fascinated him. Even though the Xian Yellow Sutra had no text, and there were just pictures, after Hansen observed it in death, he started to feel a chill. The entire situation was weird. How could a paper that was fished up from Underworld Lake contain pictures of the human body? Hansen considered the possibility that the pictures weren't depicting humans, but a race that simply had similar features to humans. But after a thorough investigation of the red and blue lines that crisscrossed the figures in the pictures, goosebumps began to flare up across Hansen's body. The lines in the pictures were like the Blood Pulse Sutra. No, this Gino art wasn't similar, it was the opposite. It was like the Blood Pulse Sutra, but in reverse. Hansen didn't know what would happen if one was to practice the Blood Pulse Sutra in reverse, but that was what the Xian Yellow Sutra appeared to be. Is someone trying to use the Xian Yellow Sutra to trick me? Hansen frowned. He had no idea what to make of this situation. He had fished up a human Gino art from the Underworld Lake. And rather than being some random skill, it was a reversed version of the Gino Art Blood Pulse Sutra. It was all so very weird. 
but it didn't make sense that this was being orchestrated by someone who was trying to mess with him. Underworld Lake connected with the anti-material world. No one was able to actually go there. And even if someone had gone down there, no one should have known Hansen could practice the Blood Pulse Sutra and given him the same Gino art in reverse. Hansen looked at the Xian Yellow Sutra with a complex expression. He didn't dare practice it. He didn't even want to think about it. He actually wouldn't have to practice it. If he ever wished to use it, he just had to cast the Blood Pulse Sutra in reverse. But Hansen had no idea what would happen if he tried that. The pages of the Xian Yellow Sutra didn't suggest what would happen, either. He couldn't guess what the ramifications of running the Geno art in that manner would be. What is going on? Hansen wanted to find someone from Blood Legion to ask, but he was in Outer Sky. He was now disconnected from the Outer World. He couldn't simply call up a Blood Legion member now. Hansen put away the Xian Yellow Sutra. He didn't dare look at it anymore. If he was still interested in it in the future, he could cast the Blood Pulse Sutra backward. God only knew what might happen if he did that, though. It would be great if Mr. White was here. With his knowledge of the universe, he should be able to help me analyze what the Xian Yellow Sutra is all about. Hansen wished he had spent more time studying. Now, he really regretted that he hadn't taken the time to study the Xian Min knowledge. If he had, he might have been able to tell what exactly was going on here. While he was thinking furiously about what to do, the small jade figure's triangle symbol lit up again. Hansen quieted his mind and forced himself into thinking about the very real body. Not long after, Exquisite teleported nearby. She wasn't alone, however. She had brought Lee Kier along with her. Hansen hadn't seen Lee Kier since they parted ways in the core area. She looked a bit sad, now. She clearly wasn't as happy as she had been at the beginning of the year. Exquisite introduced Lee Kier to Hans. Senator Lee Kier remembered Hansen, but she had no idea he was her coveted dollar. Hansen, there is something I would like you to help me with. After Exquisite introduced them to each other, she spared no time in making a request. What can I do to help you on this fine day? Hansen asked, raising an eyebrow in surprise. He was an outsider in outer sky, so there wasn't much he would be able to do. This must be a very unique request if Exquisite had come to ask for his help in particular. There have been difficulties in Lee Kier's search for a silkworm. She has been unable to find a suitable one, and therefore, she still needs one, Exquisite said. Lee Kier shook her head. Continuing to look down in the dumps, she said, Third sister, you don't have to beat around the bush so much. The silkworm I selected rejected me, and he will never want to see me again. Therefore, I have to choose a new silkworm. Hansen carefully avoided thinking about that. He was afraid that Exquisite would notice his thoughts and dredge up a disconcerting truth or two. He knew Lee Kier was talking about Dollar, but she had accused him wrongly. He hadn't been absent from the core area because he was avoiding her. In fact, he hadn't been making any effort to hide from Lee Kier. He had simply been trapped inside Outer Sky, where going to the core area wasn't an option. What can I help you with, then? Hansen asked, looking at Exquisite. He didn't know what Exquisite wanted from him. He had already agreed to be Exquisite's silkworm, so he didn't know what he could do to help Lee Kier. The time limit is almost up and my little sister won't be able to find a good silkworm before the deadline. Therefore, I'm asking you to help. If you can convince Lone Bamboo to become my little sister's silkworm, we would really appreciate it, Exquisite said. I really can't do that. If Lone Bamboo was willing to come, he wouldn't have chosen to go to prison rather than become a silkworm. Nothing that anyone says to him will change that. He is his own man, Hansen said, raising his hands helplessly. You're saying that even with the friendship between you two, he won't listen to you? I thought he was willing to go in your stead, Exquisite said while staring at Hans Sr. I'm sorry, but I really cannot help you with this. Hansen shook his head. He knew how tenuous his situation was. Despite having the small jade figure, he still had to remain vigilant at all times. It was harder than being a thief inside a police station. If he wasn't careful, Exquisite would do a deep dive into his mind. He was already in such dire straits, but he didn't want Bamboo to suffer the same fate. If you cannot convince Lone Bamboo, then there is only one other way in which you can help us. Exquisite giggled to Hansen while she spoke. What is it? Hansen asked, feeling a little dread settle upon him. It's exactly what you're thinking. Please be my little sister's silkworm, too, Exquisite said, speaking Hansen's worry into reality. Chapter 2663, Twice the Benefits how would that work, exactly? 
Hansen looked at Exquisite in shock. What's strange about it? Since you're already being watched by one person, being watched by another is practically the same. You just need to share your experiences with one more person. It won't be detrimental to you in any way, and you can double the benefits you receive. You will receive the same amount of resources from me and my little sister. Effectively, you'll be receiving double what others receive. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Exquisite said to Hansen with a beaming smile. I suppose you're correct, but I still think there might be a problem with this plan, Hansen quietly said. What could go wrong? Aren't you happy about being able to receive twice the resources? Exquisite thought about it a bit, and then said, If you become Lee Kier's silkworm, you can even receive more star fruit. But the elder is no longer here. I thought the star tree would stop giving out fruit, Hansen said. I'm just giving you an example. There are many more resources like the star tree on the path ahead, and you will be receiving a double portion, Exquisite said. Then, she clapped a hand on Hansen's shoulder and teleported away. They went straight to the altar where Hansen had signed his contract with Exquisite. Hansen signed another contract to become Lee Kier's silkworm. Because Exquisite was there, though, Hansen kept his mind carefully blank. He waited until he was alone, out of Exquisite and Lee Kier's range of connection, before thinking things over some more. He was in a bad situation. I wonder if the small jade figure can absorb two marks. If it can't, I'm going to be exposed. Hansen quickly brought out the small jade figure as he mulled over his situation. He moved to transfer Lee Kier's branding onto the small jade figure. Fortunately, Hansen's biggest worries didn't come to fruition. The mark was successfully applied to the small jade figure. Since the jade figure managed to absorb the additional mark, this situation is a good thing, I suppose. It makes little difference if I'm watched by one person or two. And if it means I can earn double the resources, where is the harm in that? I guess this is a lucky turn of events? Hansen still couldn't convince himself that this was a good thing, though. He felt as if there was something dangerous about the situation, but he couldn't quite put his finger on what it was exactly. Exquisite has been talking a lot about these rewards that I'll be earning. I wonder what they are. I hope I can get my hands on some deified xenogeneic genes, Hansen thought to himself. In the meantime, Exquisite and Lee Kier were standing in a hall, signing Hansen up for the silkworm bouts. That was the rewards Exquisite had been talking about. The silkworm fights provided many resources to the victor, but the silkworm had to earn them. The higher rank they were, the more resources they would receive. There were 13 very high students and 12 silkworms. If someone ended up outside the top 10, their rewards would be practically nothing. Ranks 5 to 10 weren't much better. Their rewards were fairly small, but things got much better for those in the top 5. Going up sequentially, each rank gave double what the last received. The prizes had been structured in that way to inspire the silkworms to work their hardest in battle. The very high wanted them to bring out everything they had. It was important for the young very high to feel the life and death fights of their silkworms. They needed to feel every ounce of emotion such battles could draw out. And they could do it all from the comfort of their seats. They could experience the dire straits of mortal combat without ever putting themselves in danger. Only the very high had a system that allowed their students to do such a thing. The very high were surprised to find out that Exquisite and Lee Kier were sharing the same silkworm. It had happened before in the history of the very high, but it was a very rare occurrence. The very high that practiced the very high sense didn't comment on the arrangement, but the very high like Li Yuzhen were less reserved with their opinions. Li Kier and Exquisite are using the same silkworm. That Han Sin is quite lucky. He has benefited from our people yet again, Li Yuzhen said coldly. Li Xueqing laughed and said, being the silkworm of two very high masters won't be good for him, all things considered. Although he can earn double the resources, his responsibilities will also be doubled. After pausing, Li Xuecheng went on to say, Plus, once he causes many of the very high to lose their wagers in the silkworm fights, it will be very difficult for him to gain resources anyway. You collected the bets? Li Yuzhen laughed. I collected them all before it was announced that silkworms wouldn't be able to use treasures in the battle. I won't let the gamblers bail now. Li Xuecheng's eyes sparkled. Hansen just needs to not get first place in the silkworm fights. Then, we will be rich. The resources we gain will be enough to make us deified. They will take us to larva class, at least. And some of the treasures are so rare that we couldn't have bought them with all the resources in the world. But if we lose, there is no way we can pay it all back. 
How could we lose? Li Yuzhen said with a laugh. Every single silkworm is at least half deified. They are half a level higher than Han Senator, and if push comes to shove, the born defied will be mopping the floor with him. No matter how strong Hansen is, he will never get any further than number two. You are right. No matter how strong a ninth tier king is, they cannot beat a deified. Plus, that born deified is very talented. He isn't much weaker than the very high students themselves. He is very good when compared to our members at the same level. Beating a mere king will be a trivial task for him, Li Xueqing said with assurance. He was confident he was going to win this bet. When Exquisite and Li Qir finally explained the rewards that they'd been promising, Hansen shook his head. This is the good stuff you've been talking about? I will have to fight for my life in there. And I can only join as a single person. Why would there be double benefits for me? You will have both of us to support you. Isn't that twice the benefits? Exquisite said flatly. Hansen and Li Qir looked at Exquisite, gobsmacked. Hansen didn't know if Exquisite was just fooling around but Lee Kier was especially surprised by seeing how Exquisite was behaving. It was hard to believe this was the same Exquisite she had grown up with. Why are you looking at me like that? If you have the time, read the files I've sent you about your opponents. And remember, the higher the rank you achieve, the more resources you receive. If you can reach second place, you will get a deified treasure amongst many other resources, Exquisite said calmly. What about becoming number one? Hansen kept looking at the information he was giving while he asked. There is a born deified participating in this fight. He will probably secure first place. You just need to try your best to be second, Exquisite said with a small shrug. A born deified is joining? And I can't use treasures? I suppose I will have to settle for second, then, Hansen said with a nod. If he couldn't use his peacock king soul robe and the six core snake bow, he didn't think he could beat a deified elite. Not even a primitive one, which was the lowest tier of deified. Chapter 2664 Deified Say 2664 Deified Say Likir and Exquisite departed Underworld Lake. Likir turned and looked at Exquisite with confusion. You aren't going to tell him about all the bets that have been placed on his performance? What is the point in him knowing that? Are we going to make him fight for his life against a born deified? I don't want to have to find another silkworm, Exquisite said. You're right. Likir said, tilting her head in acknowledgement. It is impossible for a king to beat a born deified. Plus, that deified has no lack of talent himself. He's as good as a student of the very high. It won't be easy for anyone to win against him, and Han Sao is just a ninth tier king. Likir sighed and continued. The people who have placed big bets on Hansen, who believed he would earn first place, are going to lose the items they have wagered. They won't be able to do anything against Li Xueqing. They'll definitely take out their anger on Hansen, even if they don't hold him personally responsible. Wherever he goes, I'm sure trouble will follow close behind. That is something that cannot be avoided. We just have to find a way to sort this out, or at least mitigate the fallout, Exquisite glumly said. Hansen spent some time reviewing the information he had been given. Their descriptions and short bios of the twelve silkworms he would be squaring off against. The information was comprehensive, and whoever had been responsible for compiling it had done an excellent job. It was like a bona fide restaurant menu. There was an image of every silkworm in the documents he received, too. Hansen saw the born deified fellow on the first page. Shale, Lionheart Mutant. Level, Primitive Deified. Sex, Male. Primary Geno Arts, Lion Killer. Hobbies and Interests, Dessert. The content of the documents was very detailed, but most of the information was also pointless for Hans Sen's purposes. He didn't need to know the hobbies of his competition. He didn't need to know what color of armor they wore or the things they liked to do for fun. There was no mention of their powers. All he learned was that the deified had a geno art called Lion Killer. So far, reading this is no help at all. Hansen shook his head. Hansen kept on reading, and he noticed that every profile was the same. When he flipped over to the fourth contestant, he saw the description of Yushanshin. Again, the introduction was the same. It only described his looks and the fact that he was skilled in the extreme evil path. That was about it. Hansen kept flipping through the profiles, page by page. He memorized the faces of the silkworms, their names, and their races. The other information was useless for him to remember. Hansen flipped through the character information and reached the last page. There, he saw his own profile. 
Hansen, Crystallizer, Serving Sky Palace. Level, 9th Tier King. Sex, Male. Primary Geno Arts. The Story of Jeans, Teeth Knife, Under the Sky Knife Skills. Own Treasures, Charming God's Jian, The Shield of the Medusa's Gaze, Unknown Feather Clothes, Unknown Bow. Wait, what is this? Hansen was frozen. The information he had on the other silkworms was practically useless. But the profile on him was surprisingly detailed. It said everything quite clearly and explicitly mentioned the treasures he wielded. It even separated each one to describe each geno art and treasure in a grossly detailed fashion. It was all so very elaborate. Who created this D asterisk MN folder? Why has the writer only gone and exposed my powers? Hansen felt as if he wanted to kill someone. He didn't know anything about his enemies, but the enemies knew everything about him. This was bullcrap. At the end of the information, there was a summary. The genius that can suppress thousands of races that compose the fabric of the wonderful universe we live in. The one that stands out the most can become the greatest silkworm. Aside from Shale, who we know can fight, the other has yet to be decided. He is the most popular winner in the silkworm bouts. You mother faster as Kerr. After reading the summary, Hansen felt fairly sure that he had been set up. Hansen flipped through the book a few more times. He finally saw the last sentence at the back of the book, too, then. It said, Editor, Li Xuecheng. Who is this Li Xuecheng? Why is he turning everyone against me? Hansen wondered, bewildered. He didn't recall encountering a man that went by that name before. In fact, he'd only met a few of the very high since he arrived in Outer Sky. He didn't know anyone called Li Xuecheng, so there was no way he had offended him. Are Li Xuecheng and Li Yuzhen working together? Hansen wondered to himself. Aside from Li Yuzhen, he could think of no other person of the very high who would want to see him down like this. Thinking of this, Hansen was given a shock. He realized that the silkworm's bouts wouldn't be as easy as he initially presumed. Hansen flipped back through the folder and read the details of his opponents again and again. They were all top class fighters. There were many of the extreme king there, and Yu Shanshin was one of the sky. And in regards to Shale, who was a lionheart, it was actually a nameless race. There was only one half deified among his people. Shale just so happened to be the son of that half deified, but for some reason, there was a gene mutation when he was born. It led to him becoming deified. He was extraordinarily talented. After the God Spirit Touches test, he was registered as a 10 armor talent. Following his lead, the race of the Lion Hearts had gained wider renown. If he hadn't been selected by one of the very high students to become a silkworm, he would have been planning a fight for a lantern. Shale was chosen to be a silkworm four years ago. He had been practicing in outer sky for a long time, and he was so talented. With all that extra time to practice and refine those talents, it was easy to imagine how scary he would be as an opponent. If I can use treasures, I'll definitely be able to beat Shale and reach first place. If I can't use treasures, then I will fail to defeat Shale, and possibly all the other silkworms as well. Even setting aside the others, I'll have to fight you, Shanshin. That guy will be very hard to deal with, Hansen thought to himself. At the back of the folder, there was a list of all the rewards one could receive from various placements in the silkworm bouts. When Hansen saw the reward for first place, his mouth gaped. What is a deified treasure set? Hansen was confused, and so he continued reading. After reading it, he could only think, the rich are stubborn. The so-called deified treasure set was a set of armor composed of powerful treasures. The chest piece was a deified treasure. So was the belt. The gauntlets and the boots were four deified treasures. With the helmet, that made seven deified treasures. It combined to become a deified treasure set called the Apollo set. Hansen continued to read. He noticed the Apollo set wasn't just a deified treasure composed of seven pieces. Each piece was an individual deified treasure. They were all primitive class. If Hansen used them all together, it would allow him to make use of special substance chains. That would put him at transmutation level. The second place contestant would receive one deified treasure. There were other resources that would be awarded as well, but none of them were deified. There was a wide gulf of prestige separating the rewards for second place and the rewards to be earned in first place. The folder included a photo of the Apollo set. The entire thing shone silver like a polished mirror. It looked bad dash asterisk SS and mysterious. It seemed to radiate glory. Hansen read the description of the Apollo set, 
and after reading it, he felt himself starting to drool. If a user hadn't reached Deified, they couldn't activate the Apollo set's power. But if multiple people used the pieces of the set simultaneously, the seven-piece set could activate Apollo's wings, which were the substance chains. They had primitive power, and a king could control them. Chapter 2665, Very Difficult. This is good stuff. The very high can hand out rewards like this for something that is little more than a game to them? Other races wouldn't have this many resources to play with, Hansen sighed. The very high were F asterisk king rich. Hansen would protect any deified treasure he found like it was his own child, yet the very high were handing out seven of them as little more than prize money. He couldn't think of another race that could match this level of wealth. The extreme king called themselves the number one race, but compared to the very high, they were nothing but turtles. Their society was measly in comparison. If I can take down Outer Sky, as soon as Hansen had this thought, he shook it off. He knew he couldn't risk entertaining thoughts like that. He could never think such dangerous things during his time there. If Lee Keir and Exquisite found out what he was considering for the future, it wouldn't end very well for him. Hansen kept turning the matter over and over in his head. Eventually, he thought, I really want that Apollo set. Maybe I can deal with those other silkworms. I can handle those fights, but that shale. I really don't know how I'm going to bring him down. I can't use beast souls, and I can't use my super god spirit body, because they all know me as Han Sr. How can I beat a born deified, then? Hansen thought about this for a long time, but he couldn't figure out a solution. After all, he didn't know much about shale. According to the information he'd been given, there was little known about the man. When Exquisite and Lee Keir came back, Hansen asked them if they had more information on the other eleven silkworms. Exquisite already had it prepared for him. She handed over the documents that she and Lee Keir had spent the last few days gathering. By the way, who is this Lee Xuechung? Did I offend him in some way? Hansen asked, pointing to the first folder. He showed them the back and the name of the editor that was written there. He is connected to Lee Yuzhen, Exquisite admitted after a moment of hesitation. Hansen couldn't read Exquisite's mind, but he was a very observant person. Exquisite was obviously reacting strangely. He knew there was something between the lines here. Has Li Yuzhen done something? Hansen asked. Exquisite remained silent and didn't answer, but Li Kier said, I think we should let Hansen know. It will be for the better. He should know so he can be prepared for the fallout, regardless. What is going on? Hansen frowned again. Exquisite explained the wagers that the very high had made with Li Xuecheng. And then, she said, actually, this has little to do with you. This is simply a whole bunch of people being scammed by Li Xuecheng for a host of resources and treasures. I'm afraid they might not let it go easily, though. Hansen smiled wryly and asked, Do the very high like gambling this much? Those who study the very high sense have no interest in gambling, but the other branch of our crooked tree. I think Outer Sky is too safe. The very high on the other side don't know what it is like to fight for your life in the face of adversity and death. Some things come too easily to them, and as a result, they don't treasure what they have. Li Kier shook her head and sighed. If we make them lose so many resources and treasures, are they going to be mad at me? Hansen asked. They won't come after you, but I can tell you that they won't be happy with you, either. Li Xueqing only wanted to get those resources and treasures, and to do that, he used you, Exquisite said. Maybe they won't get scammed. If I help them win a lot of resources and treasures, wouldn't they be more inclined to help me out in the future? Hansen said with a dark laugh. Of course. They control many of Outer Sky's resources. It can be difficult to avoid interacting with them, and if they like you, things will go so much easier for you. After that, Li Kier looked at Hansen with shock. What are you going to do? It's simple, isn't it? To solve all of this neatly, I just have to end up number one in the silkworm fights, Hansen growled. You're right, that would fix it. But, Shale is the unsurmountable challenge you have ahead of you. His talents are scary. There is no doubt about that. In his short four years here, he has learned many geno arts. That includes proficiency with God's wander. He can use space teleportation. If you want to fight him, I don't think anything you can throw at Shale will work, Li Kier said. If I haven't yet tried, how can you so easily think that I can't beat him? Hansen was very calm and composed throughout all this. He quietly opened the new documents and began to study them. Li Kier and Exquisite looked at each other. 
they could sense the confidence that had spurred Hans into the lofty heights he frequently reached. He now seemed quite confident that he had what it took to defeat Shale. But they couldn't understand where that unbridled confidence came from. Third sister, don't you think this is a bit weird? Why can we feel his confidence, but not where the confidence comes from? Unless he is a blindly confident bag of grass, we should be able to feel what is inside him that gives him the confidence he needs to take on this challenge, Lee Keir said to Exquisite after Hansen left. She didn't think Hansen was a bag of grass. His mental control power is so strong. He can control his thoughts. Aside from direct emotions, it is nearly impossible for us to discern what he is thinking, Exquisite said. The hardest thing to control is your own mind. Even the very high need the very high sense to do it, yet he can do it on his own. Third sister, your choice in Silkworm is exceptional, Lee Keir said with a sigh. I'm not sure where his confidence comes from, but I think he wants to reach first place. If he succeeds, it will be good for you and me, Exquisite said. I only fear that he is overestimating his capabilities and will die in some tragic way because of it. Then, we will have to go and find a new silkworm. Lee Keir wasn't very confident about this, and she thought to herself, if he was Dollar, I'm sure he would be able to do this. Sometimes, the things people wanted most were the things that they couldn't have. Lee Keir still missed Dollar. Hansen investigated the eleven silkworms, and he started to develop a headache. None of them would be easy to fight. There were many difficult people in the competition in addition to Shale, who topped them all. One of the silkworms was actually a very high. It was very rare to have a very high as a silkworm. Although all the very high were very strong, their powers were too similar. And they had all been raised in the same environment. Having a very high as a silkworm wouldn't allow the master to learn as much, and so not many of the very high would agree to take one of their own as a silkworm. Plus, Ordinary very high thought that only low-life creatures deserve to become silkworms. They wouldn't want to ruin their own reputation by becoming a silkworm, so it was very rare to see this amongst the very high. A very high half deified. That will mean he is stronger than exquisite, right? I don't think that will be someone easily defeated. And that's not to mention the bigger trouble further ahead like shale. Winning these silkworm bouts won't be easy, at all. Hansen dropped the documents for the time being and went back to practicing his geno arts. There were two geno arts he had to learn before fighting Shale. If he didn't get good at those, he had no chance of winning. Chapter 2666 Mysterious Desert I want to go to the core area. Is there any way for me to do that? Hansen asked Exquisite the next time he saw her. He seemed to remember that when Lee Kier was in the very high, she frequently traveled to the core area. But Exquisite had told him that being in outer sky shut off his access to the core area. He thought she might have been telling the truth, since the many times he tried to access the core area had all ended in failure. There is a specific place in outer sky that you can go to that allows you to open the core hall door. But this is a place that not even students of the very high can go to. If you have an urgent emergency that requires you to access the core area, perhaps I can help you. Lee Kier looked at Hansen with curiosity. She was curious why Hansen wanted to go to the core area so badly. I want to go to the core area to find a friend. Perhaps he has a way that I can win the silkworm fights, Hansen said. Lee Kier could sense that Hansen wasn't lying about his general reason for going to the core area. In regards to the friend he had mentioned, she could tell that was partly true, as well. As for the identity of this mysterious friend, she had no idea. Hansen had done his best not to think about it, but when he mentioned finding a friend, he hadn't controlled his thoughts perfectly. That was unavoidable. But still, Hansen did his best to keep his thoughts away from anything incriminating. And that was enough for Lee Keir to be unable to tell the identity of the person he wished to see. Sure. I will look for a way. I will come back to you with an answer later. Mind you, this will be very tricky. There is every chance that this won't work, so don't get your hopes up. Lee Keir was shocked by how well Hansen could clamp down on his thoughts, but she knew he wasn't lying. Therefore, she set aside the idea of asking him again. Hansen waited half a day, but Lee Keir didn't return. In the meantime, Exquisite came to Underworld Lake. Hansen didn't speak, but Exquisite could tell what he was thinking. She was surprised and she said, Little sister agreed to help you enter the core area? She said that it might be difficult and it might not work. Hansen was worried Lee Keir might have been away for so long because she had some bad news to deliver. Exquisite laughed and said, this is a complicated matter. 
According to the theory, there is only one place in which outer sky can allow access to the core area. But this place is forbidden by our people. Not only is it a restricted zone for outsiders, but even most of the very high are forbidden to go there. Not many people can do what she is doing. Little sister is one of the very few. If she wants to help you, and your luck isn't too bad, it might work. What is this place that you're talking about? Hansen asked with curiosity. I once told you that outer sky resides between the real world and the anti-material world. This place exists between those two realms. Because it connects those two opposing powers, everything here is very strange. Connecting to the real world and opening a door to the core hall can be complicated. Exquisite didn't explain much beyond that. Because the process can be dangerous, we forbid very high students from entering the core hall. But little sister's father is the guardian, and she is much loved. It shouldn't be difficult for her to convince her father to give you a chance. I see. Now, Hansen understood. After waiting for another hour, Lee Keir finally returned. She came bearing good news, which made Hansen feel relieved. Lee Keir used space teleportation to guide him to their destination. After a few jumps, they reached a desert. That desert appeared endless. It must have been as big as a solar system. Even with Hansen's eyesight, he couldn't see the end of that desert. It was difficult to imagine how large it was. As they stood in the desert, Lee Keir suddenly shouted into the endless wastes. Dad, I've brought him here. Can we go now? A crazy wind suddenly spawned in the quiet and dead desert. The raging wind threw yellow sand into the sky, then morphed to present the face of a very high man. Remember, don't go past the three lines, shouted the very high man. He looked like a sand god, and his voice sounded like thunder. I know. It doesn't matter how many times you say it, I won't forget and go beyond the three lines. We only want to go to the core area. That's all, Likir said nicely. The sand deity-looking man shook his head. He couldn't stop Lee Keir from doing this. The wind blew, and then the sand collapsed back onto the ground. The sand god disappeared, and silence returned to the desert. Let's go, Lee Keir said. Then, she ventured forward into the big desert. Hansen followed her. Lee Keir kept walking and said, The area around here is unstable. Please don't use space teleportation powers here. And don't exert too much strength. Otherwise, you might find yourself being dragged into the anti-material world. If that happened, not even our leader could retrieve you. Hansen nodded. Now he understood why Lee Kier had to walk instead of just teleporting them forward. The two of them walked through the desert. Sometimes, Hansen noticed old, weird buildings leering out of the sand. There were ancient stone structures and really advanced metal buildings. There were even battleships and airships scattered here and there in the yellow sand. God only knew how long they had been there. Even the platinum, which should have been impervious to time, was rotten. When the wind blew, platinum boards broke loose and scattered like dust across the sand. There was a statue that was 100 meters high, and there were the remains of thousands of beasts. There was a dead tree in the sand that looked like a real dragon. The whole huge desert felt very weird. But there was no consistent style to the relics in the desert. They were obviously a mishmash of random items stemming from a variety of different points across history. They seemed to have been tossed into the desert and left there like trash. The sight was disconcerting, somehow. After reading Han Sin's mind, Lee Kier explained, This is a crossroads between the real world and the anti-material world. There are always items from the real world or the anti-material that get lost, twisted, and thrown in here. Every now and again, powerful items end up in here. My dad once found the xenogeneic body of a butterfly-class creature. But that was just a stroke of luck. Most of the things sent here are just useless trash. A loud boom interrupted Lee Keir as she was speaking. It shook the two of them as if the sky had been cracked open. Then, Hansen saw something very large emerge from a crack above them. Hansen stared up in shock. The head of a giant beast pushed its way through a gap in the twisted, crooked sky. The beast's head was silver and it looked like some artwork made of precious metal. Three horns emerged from its face. It kind of looked like a triceratops, but it was much bigger than a triceratops. The head alone was ten meters long. Blood gushed from its mouth. Boom. The giant beast fell from the sky and landed in the desert in front of them. The impact of its body hitting the ground shook the sand like an earthquake. Chapter 2667 Meeting Destiny Again Hansen stared at the giant beast that had fallen into the sand. It looked a lot like a triceratops, 
but its body was silver and white, and a large pair of wings spread from its back. It was hard to say what race it belonged to. It seemed badly injured, and grievous wounds covered its entire body. It was struggling to get to its feet. Blood poured from its mouth and body, dyeing the bottom of the sandy crater crimson. A small red lake was forming beneath the beast. A xenogeneic has fallen. Likir rejoiced. She quickly raced toward the crater. Hansen followed behind her. Even though it was injured, he could feel the fierce presence exuded by the giant monster. It was deified class, that was for sure. Back off, guys. Before they could even get close to that xenogeneic, a plume of sand rose near them. It took on the shape of a sand god. It was Lee Kier's father again. Before Lee Kier could answer, a sandstorm swept over them and sucked them in. Within a second, they were tossed far, far away. Boom. 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 As they got back to their feet and watched from a distance, they saw countless sand dragons emerging from the ground. They looked like ancient, deadly creatures. They followed the sand god's commands to go for the injured beast. The beast roared angrily. It quickly stood up, and an endless silver light erupted into a wild storm that consumed the sky. It battered against the sand dragons that now surrounded it. The ancient-looking dragons had been shaped from sand, and they couldn't withstand the power of that silver light. Pang. The silver light then swept over to shine on the sand god's body, blasting the shape of the sand god back in nothing, as well. Hansen watched with wide eyes. It was very fortunate that they had been pulled away from the creature. If they hadn't, the creature's remaining dregs of power would have been enough to destroy them. Likir stared at the side in terror. If her father hadn't appeared in time to keep them from getting close to the giant beast, the creature would have killed them in a moment. Likir's father can't have gone down that easily, surely. As Hansen pondered this, he saw the sea of sand swell and boil like a tumultuous sea. Fountains of sand sprayed everywhere, and a pillar of sand shot straight up into the sky, then fell back to the ground, forming itself into the figure of a sand god. That process then repeated itself over and over, creating an army of the sand beings. The sand gods raged as the remaining dragons roared. The surface of the desert had become a battlefield for ruthless giants. Despite the distance between them and the battlefield, the ground was shaking so violently that Han Sin and Li Kier were having difficulty staying on their feet. They had no choice but to retreat. They finally reached a safe distance from the fight, but Han Sin could still detect that frightening presence. He could no longer see the actual fight, though. He could only see the distant clouds of sand as some of the sand creatures were ripped apart. His ears reverberated with the sound of dragons roaring at deafening volumes. My father's real body is deep inside the three-world desert. These sand gods are just manifestations of his power, Lee Kier explained with a laugh. She could sense that Hansen was worrying about the safety of her father, but she knew he would be safe since he was deep within the sand. Hansen couldn't see what was going on in the fight anymore. That whole desert was shrouded in screens of sand. After a very sad scream, the scary rumblings in the desert came to an end. And then, all the dust settled. A sand god appeared on the horizon and came toward them, telling them they could proceed. Father, you killed the Xenogeneic? What was its level? Why was it injured and still so scary? Likir curiously asked the sand god. I don't know. It was dragged into the anti-material world, the sand god answered. Then, it disappeared. Likir wished to ask something more, but he was already gone. So, she resumed her journey across the desert with Hans Sr. The massive battle had changed the sandy landscape. Many of the weird buildings and items had been revealed from beneath the sands that once buried them. And the buildings and battleships that had once been there were now gone. Hansen didn't know if they had been destroyed or buried deep beneath the sands of the desert or what. Hansen looked around. When they reached the location where the giant beast had fallen, a large section of the desert was dyed red. But they couldn't see the body of the giant beast anymore. It is a shame that the beast was sucked into the anti-material world. Despite its injuries, it was able to do battle with my dad for so long. It must have been a larva-class deified xenogeneic, at the very least. Lee Kier looked at the red sand regretfully. Hansen felt that it was a shame, too. If he had been able to stab the creature once, he might have been able to nab a beast's soul. That xenogeneic was so strong, and its beast's soul might have been equally powerful. Hansen kept walking, looking around as he went. Then, suddenly, he froze. Some distance away in the desert, Hansen saw a tower that was built from stone. 
That old tower was leaning visibly, and it looked as if it might fall over any second. Hansen looked at the stone tower's plaque. Written there were the two words, Destiny's Tower. The tower was styled just like the Destiny's Tower controlled by the Extreme King. Hansen was stunned at the sight, but he immediately clamped down on his thoughts. He wasn't going to let out any memories associated with this tower. He had to suppress everything he knew about Destiny's Tower. Lee Kier could feel that Han Sin's mind was struggling with something. She looked at the stone tower, too. After a while of looking at it, she said, I've never seen that stone tower before. It must have been revealed by the battle earlier. Do you recognize it? It is exactly the same stone tower I saw when I was with the Extreme King. Hansen knew he couldn't hide this from Lee Kier completely, and so he had to explain it a bit. Lee Kier thought for another moment. She nodded and said, Now that you mention it, I think I remember something like that. When I visited the Extreme King, I once saw a tower like this too. Let's go. We should check it out, Lee Kier suggested, and so they went toward it. She wasn't interested in the tower, but she could feel Hansen doing his best to suppress the desire to visit the place. Hansen was trying to keep his thoughts away from the nature of Destiny's Tower, so Lee Kier wouldn't be able to see everything he knew about the structures. But that sort of control on his mind suggested to Lee Kier that Destiny's Tower had some relevance to Han Senator if it didn't. Hansen wouldn't have tried so hard to control his thoughts about the place. Being watched sucks. Hansen sighed and followed Lee Kier toward Destiny's Tower. The tower looked very old, and it was impossible to tell how many years it had been there. While the structure might have been old, it wasn't broken. Lee Kier reached the door and twisted the handle. The stone door swung open smoothly. The two of them walked inside. The tower was full of dust and sand, but otherwise, it seemed to be empty. It looked like an ordinary watchtower. Let's go up and see. Lee Kier walked toward the stairs. Hansen followed Lee Kier, trying to keep a lid firmly over any sensitive topics that might otherwise come to mind. The second floor was still so empty. There was nothing there. Lee Kier didn't give up, though. She kept ascending the tower. The whole tower seemed to be empty until they approached the seventh floor. Huh? There is someone here. Lee Kier looked at the top floor's stone platform in shock. Chapter 2668 Empty God On a large stone platform, a man was sitting with his legs crossed. The man was very still, and Hansen couldn't sense any presence of a life force within him. It looked as if he had been petrified in that position. Hansen's face looked weirded out, and he couldn't help but think. This is so similar to what I saw in the Destiny's Tower of the Extreme King. The man over there looked quite a bit different, though. Lee Kier heard Han Sin's thought, and she looked at the man atop the platform with shock. Weird. It is a creature, but why does it not have a life force? As a look of confusion crossed Lee Kier's face, the man on the stone platform opened his eyes. He looked at them and said, I am Empty God. The fact that you have met me today is surely the working of fate. I can fulfill any wish you speak. You can make any request you desire. Not again. Hansen's heart jumped. Lee Kier looked at the man coldly and said, How dare you call yourself a god in front of them? Very high. Not even the ancient god would refer to themselves as proper gods. After that, Lee Kier swung a sword light at the man. She struck too fast for Hansen to try to stop her. The sword light came down on the man's head, but the man didn't even have to move. The sword light crashed against one of his eyebrows. Pang. The man's eyebrow wasn't even ruffled. Lee Kier was hurled back by a scary force. The power was so strong that it swept past all of Lee Kier's defenses. She was thrown into the wall hard, and she coughed up a mouthful of blood. She passed out and fell into a coma. Her life force faded quickly. How dare you challenge a god's dignity and question his authenticity? This is your punishment, but seeing as this is your first infraction, the punishment will not be severe, the man said in an icy voice. Hansen quickly ran toward Lee Kier and checked her vitals. She had only fainted, and while her life force was fading, it was seeping away slowly. She was in no immediate danger. He thought to himself, this god seems different from the other one I met. I remember the man in the extreme king's destiny's tower shouted, Empty God. Is this the empty god he was referring to? Now, make your wish, Empty God said, looking at Hans Sr. My life is perfect as it is. Thanks. I have a wife, a happy family, great kids, and I always get what I want. Anyway, add to that. I'm super rich. I have everything. I don't need anything more. Can I choose not to make a wish? 
Hansen looked at Empty God as he spoke. Hansen didn't know if this Empty God was the same as the other God. If it was the same, then this really was just a statue. It wasn't the true self of the God it represented. Therefore, he didn't have to worry too much. The black crystal armor could wipe it out in a heartbeat. If this was the God's real body, though, then a fight might be a bad idea. Hansen wasn't sure if the black crystal armor could also defeat these gods in their real forms. No, Empty God said coldly. Hansen's heart fell ill. He ignored Empty God, picked up Leek here, turned around, and started to run. Empty God only looked at Hansen peacefully. He didn't look as if he was going to stop Hansen from leaving. Hansen was trying to figure out whether or not Empty God was really going to fight. He was also doing this to test the black crystal armor and sense if there was any movement from it. But its life force was hidden, so he couldn't feel anything. Empty God didn't stop Hansen, either. Still holding the unconsciously Kier, Hansen departed the seventh floor. He went down floor by floor without being stopped by any aggressive powers. Finally, he reached the first floor of Destiny's Tower. But when he reached the first floor, Hansen froze. There should have been a door at the bottom floor of Destiny's Tower, but there was none. There was only another stone staircase leading farther down into the tower. I've already reached the bottom floor. Why are there more stairs that can lead me down even farther? Have I remembered it incorrectly, and this is actually the second floor? Hansen quickly dismissed that idea. Destiny's Tower only had seven floors, and with his exceptional memory, he couldn't have been wrong. Hansen reached out a hand to where the door should have been, but there was just a wall there. It wasn't an optical illusion. There really wasn't a door. Ping. Hansen threw a punch at the stone wall. With his strength, even a mountain would have been destroyed by one of his punches. But the stone wall didn't buckle and there wasn't a single scrape left on its surface. Hansen frowned. He knew that nothing would be achieved by using brute force. He looked at the stone staircase, then turned and continued walking down. When he reached the floor below, he noticed that there was another stone platform. The stone platform had that same man on it, the one who had called himself Empty God. It was exactly as it was on the seventh floor. Make your wish, Empty God said, staring expressionlessly at Han Sr. Hansen gnashed his teeth. Still holding Lee Kier, he continued trying to descend the stairs. There were more of them, and he swiftly descended another seven flights. He was still unable to find the first floor and its door. He only found more and more stairs. After walking down the stone stairs for a while, Hansen realized he always came back to the seventh floor of the tower. There, he saw Empty God again. Is this some sort of space power? Does it connect the seventh floor and the first floor to create some sort of weird Mobius strip? If that is true, no matter how far I walk, I will never reach the exit of this tower. I will just keep looping the same route over and over again. Hansen tried using teleportation powers but it was to no avail. No matter where he tried to teleport to, he always reappeared inside the tower, just in a different location each time. Make your wish. Whenever Hansen saw Empty God again, the man would repeat the same phrase. He never said anything else, but his expression seemed to say that Hansen had no other choice, and that sooner or later, he would have to make a wish. Hansen knew that if he made a wish, some of his lifespan would be taken by those men that called themselves gods and the wish he made would be twisted by the so-called gods. Even if the wish came true, he would have to pay too high a price. If he didn't make a wish, though, there was a chance that he and Lee Kier would never be able to exit the tower. Hansen couldn't figure a way out of this dilemma. He couldn't attack Empty God. Lee Kier had demonstrated that inability all too well. The only chance he had to attack was if he could somehow make use of his black crystal armor. Attacking Empty God in any other way was practically a death wish. Likir's father must know we walked into Destiny's Tower. If we don't emerge any time soon, he will surely come here in search of Likir. Hansen was placing his chips on Likir's father. Empty God seemed to see through what Hansen was thinking, and he coldly said, Have you heard of power that warps the passage of time? You might stay in this tower for a thousand years, but only a second will pass outside. If you're expecting a rescue team to come and find you, you'll be nothing but bones by then. Do I really have to make a wish? Hansen looked at Empty God and sighed. If you and I have met, it is something that was always meant to be. You deserve this. You cannot escape from it. Empty God spoke slowly in a bone-chilling voice. Chapter 2669 Answer of the Origin It looks like I have no choice except to make a wish. 
Hansen started to consider what sort of wish he wanted to make. The last time he made a wish in Destiny's Tower, the statue's eyes had ended up being destroyed. Now, it seemed as if it might happen again. Perhaps it would have the same effect. But even if Empty God's eyes exploded, it wouldn't help him much. The statue would still have its power, and it would still threaten Hansen and shorten his lifespan. No matter what wish I make, unless the Black Crystal Armor attacks him, my lifespan is going to be shortened. Why don't I ask a question I have always wanted to ask instead? Perhaps I can at least learn some useful information out of this, Hansen thought. Then, he looked at Empty God and asked, Can my wish be a question that you will answer? Of course. I can do anything. I can answer any question you seek to ask, Empty God said coldly. I want to know, are you and I the same? Are you a creature of this universe too? Or do you come from someplace outside the universe? Regardless of the answer, I want to know where God was born, Hansen said, posing his question. Empty God's eyes flashed. He looked at Hansen slowly and said, Are you sure you want to ask me this question? It is useless for you to know this. I told you already that I don't lack anything. But I'm curious about you. If you must make me compose a wish, I would like to know this answer, Hansen said. Empty God looked at Hansen and frowned. There were three questions. You can only receive the answer for one. Hansen looked at the Empty God for a long moment, then asked his ultimate question. Please tell me. Empty God, are you a creature of this universe? Hansen had always been suspicious about God coming from the Geno Hall. Even mighty beings like the ancient water god had been killed in a single blow when they tried to enter the Geno Hall. The power of the beast within that place was far too shocking. Aside from those who called themselves gods, Hansen couldn't think of any other being that possessed such power. But if Hansen asked the god where he was born, Empty God could answer by telling him a name that he wouldn't recognize. If Hansen had never heard of the place, then he wouldn't know if it was in the universe or not. So, Hansen eventually decided to ask the simplest of questions. He needed to confirm if the god was a creature that came from the Geno universe. This was the root of all questions he would later want to ask. With knowledge of its origin, he would have a more solid basis for formulating theories and asking future questions. This was very important. Empty God didn't hesitate this time. He answered straight away. No. I am God. I come from God Place. When Hansen heard the answer, he nodded. The way Empty God said it was so vague. He had, perhaps deliberately, twisted the answer. But Hansen had still received the answer he had wanted. God wasn't a creature that came from the Geno universe. This answer was enough for Hansen to confirm, at the very least, that the God he was facing was something more than a deified elite. This being was even more almighty. These guys called themselves gods. But Hansen thought they were more like devils that had invaded the ordinary world. Hanjinji and Blood Legion had been dealing with scary beings like this for a long time. The effort they had put in was unimaginable for normal people. When Hansen received this answer, he felt his power start to fade away. His power drained so rapidly that it actually physically pulled him toward Empty God. Hansen had already experienced this before, and he knew it was his lifespan being reduced. But this time, it was fading much faster than it had upon his first wish. He could see his lifespan fading away like an avalanche. Empty God looked at Hansen coldly. A weird light shone around the statue, making him look both godlike and insubstantial at the same time. A moment later, a century's worth of lifespan had left Hansen's body. It made Hansen feel tired and worn out. The drain didn't stop, though. Hansen was now losing years at an even greater speed. Hansen was prepared to give up a lot of his lifespan, so he didn't mind sacrificing a few years. After all, nabbing secrets right from God's mouth wasn't easy. Hansen had already received a big boost to his lifespan from the previous God doll. He could accept this kind of loss. But the next second, the black crystal armor inside his sea of soul reacted. While Hansen continued to lose years, the black crystal armor's mysterious presence exploded with energy. That power spread over Hansen's body. The spreading black crystal armor gave Hansen a unique feeling. It was as if someone's presence was surrounding him. Hansen was quite familiar with this presence. He tried to think it over, and he finally remembered where he had felt that presence before. It was the same presence he had sensed when the black crystal armor blew up the statue of the previous god. Hansen didn't have time to think. The black crystal armor glowed with a strange godly light. It flew out of the Sea of Soul, then punched empty god who was still sitting atop the stone platform. 
Empty God had been blithely sucking in Han Sin's lifespan without ever realizing that something like this might happen. Plus, he hadn't even realized that there was a power out there that could harm him. So, he hadn't remained vigilant against a sudden attack. He had grown lax in his security. Ping. What Han Sin had witnessed before was now happening again. Under the tremendous force of the crystal armor's punch, Empty God's body shattered. A massive surge of life force rose from the crumbling statue. Lifespan plus one. Lifespan plus one. The announcement of his lifespan increasing repeated over and over. That new power entered Han Sin's body, stretching out his potential lifespan. At the same moment that the god doll was destroyed, in a hall inside an empty realm, empty god's eyes blazed with terrible fury. And he said, Sky Armor Power. Sky Armor God. I only destroyed your god doll's eyes. How dare you destroy my god doll? This isn't over yet. Hansen had no idea, but due to these meetings, he had started a fight between two gods. The black crystal armor returned to Hansen's sea of soul. Hansen had gained more than a thousand years of additional lifespan. Of course, if you're going to become rich overnight, I guess killing a god is a reasonable way to do so. Hansen was delighted by this result. After all, he had just received a big boost to his lifespan and a great deal of life force. His whole body was brimming with a scary presence. Hansen didn't dare stay in Destiny's Tower a minute longer. He picked up Lee Kier and resumed his flight down the stairs. This time, when he reached the first floor, he encountered the door that would lead him outside. There were no more stairs leading down, keeping him inside a loop. What just happened? Lee Kier, who had been unconscious up to this point, slowly shook herself awake. I'm not really, no. That geezer was a bit weird, wasn't he? After you punched him, you got blasted into a wall and you passed out. But the man was shattered into bits, and he became a pile of rubble, Hansen said, lying to Lee Kier with a straight face. How could that happen? Lee Kier looked at Hansen with suspicion. She didn't believe his story, but she couldn't be certain from his thoughts whether he was lying or not. She went back into the tower, and at the top floor, she saw a pile of rubble just like Hansen had described. Chapter 2670, Gino Hall's Message Although Lee Kier was a little bit confused and continued to search through the tower, she failed to find anything particularly suspicious. Eventually, she gave up the search and left Destiny's tower with Han Sr. They went back to crossing the wild dunes of the desert. As they walked, Hansen continued to spot strange shapes rising out of the sand. None of the shapes seemed to be recognizable, and he had no idea where they might have come from, either. After they reached an oasis, Lee Kier told Hansen, the dimensional space here is more stable, so you can open the core area door from here. You won't be dragged into the anti-material world. Hansen thanked Lee Kier, then tried to open his core door. This time, the core door opened like usual. Hansen entered the core area again. Hansen wanted to go to the core area because, once he entered, he would be far away from Lee Kier and Exquisite. They would be unable to feel his thoughts, and Hansen could practice his secret geno arts in privacy and safety. He wouldn't be spied on. Hansen hadn't dared to practice his true Geno arts in Outer Sky. If he had, the secrets of his four sacred Geno arts would have been revealed to Lee Kier and Exquisite. That would needlessly complicate his life, he believed. So for the duration of his stay in Outer Sky, Hansen spent his time practicing the Geno arts Exquisite had given to him. Out of the Geno arts in his private roster, he only practiced the story of genes. The Rebate and Sky Palace already knew about its existence, and if they knew, so did the Very High. There was no point in hiding it, and it didn't matter if the two Very High women saw the story of genes. Aside from Hansen, no other person could learn it. Once he was in the core area, though, Hansen could practice his other Geno arts. But that wasn't the only reason he had come. He wanted to practice heart connection. If he couldn't use Beast Souls in the upcoming Silkworm battles, that might be his only attack that could deal damage to his deified nemesis, Shale. In addition, Hansen also wanted to meet up with Gu Qiqing and Elysian Moon. He wanted them to do something on his behalf. Fortunately, Gu Qiqing and Elysian Moon had already been practicing in the core area, and they weren't too far from Hansen's position. Hansen quickly contacted them and arranged a meeting. How does it feel to be a pet of the pretty ladies in the very high? Elysian Moon mocked Hansen with a smile. It feels terrible. It's like I'm naked 24-7. I have no privacy at all, Hansen glumly admitted. You have come looking for us in a rush. 
Did something happen? Elysian Moon could tell that something must have gone wrong. I have a Geno art, but I'm not sure what it does. I can't leave the very high, and I can't risk trying it myself. So, I want you to take this Geno art and find someone. Have him take a look at it and figure out if it is useful, Hansen said. Then, he passed his Xian Yellow Sutra to Gu Qiqing. Who should we give it to? Gu Qiqing asked as she accepted the Xian Yellow Sutra. There is a man called Mr. White among the Extreme King. I have a way to contact him, but with my current circumstances and my soured relationship with the Extreme King, meeting him might prove difficult. So, you guys need to be careful. After you have contacted him, make sure you are safe. And make sure you listen to what Mr. White tells you, Hansen told Gu Qiqing. He quickly explained how the women could get in touch with Mr. White. Hansen only wanted to know what might happen if he activated the Xian Yellow Sutra. If there were no issues that could arise from it, he could just use it freely. He wouldn't even need to practice it, either. He only had to perform his Blood Pulse Sutra in reverse, as that was what the Xian Yellow Sutra taught. After Gu Qiqing and Elysian Moon left, Hansen found a quiet place to practice heart connection in the core area. If he wanted a heavily wound shale, he would probably need that skill in his repertoire. There was also Break Six Skies as well. Hansen had some experience with that technique. Break Six Skies was extremely powerful, but it was an area of effect skill. Therefore, the power wasn't as concentrated as heart connection. But it was still one of the strongest Geno arts Hansen possessed. Things didn't seem to have gone smoothly for the two women. Hansen waited four days before Elysian Moon and Gu Qiqing returned to the core area. I gave the items to Mr. White. He said he would need some time to investigate. You can expect a response in two weeks, Gu Qiqing said. Two weeks? Hansen couldn't help but shake his head in dismay. There were only three days left until the silkworm bouts began. If it took two weeks to get the results back from Mr. White, he wouldn't be able to use the Geno art in the fights. But Hansen hadn't planned to use the Blood Pulse Sutra in the upcoming fights anyway, so he wasn't too disappointed. Hansen asked Gu Qiqing about Planet Eclipse and the situation with Sky Palace. Then, he practiced his Geno Arts for another couple of days. When his time was up, he departed the core area. Why did it take you so long to come back? Exquisite, seeing Hansen, felt relieved. There was less than a day to go until the Silkworm fights began. If Hansen hadn't returned in time, he would have been in a lot of trouble. My friend didn't arrive in the core area as soon as I had hoped. I had to wait for a few days before I ran into him, Hansen said. What happened? Lee Kier asked. It was a waste of time. He didn't have enough time to figure anything out, Hansen said, putting on a pained expression. You really wanted a way for a ninth tier king to beat a deified elite? Lee Kier asked. It wouldn't have mattered how long you waited. That is an impossible feat unless you can make use of your treasures it won't be happening. And it has already been decided that all treasures will be barred from use. It is obvious that Shale will rank first in this competition. Hansen thought she was most likely correct. The very high's decision sounded as if they wanted Shale to be number one, though. What's going on with that Shale? They're pretty much handing him the number one spot. Why? Hansen asked, looking at Lee Kier. Time is almost up. We need to go to the valley and join the silkworm bout. Let's talk while we walk. Likir said, and then she quickly departed the oasis. As they traveled back across the sand, Likir explained the situation to Hans Sr. Because Shale was born deified and possessed a tin armor talent, he might become a true god, assuming he had enough resources and a little luck. The most important thing was that the very high man who had signed a contract with Shale was a very important figure, too. The very high seemed to be grooming him to be the very best. They wanted him to be capable of fighting and breaking open the Geno Hall. So, even the man's silkworm would receive the best care possible to boost the very high man's chances. The very high want access to the Geno Hall, too? What is inside the Geno Hall? Hansen asked with curiosity. I don't know. One of our ancestors entered the Geno Hall and brought back some information regarding the place, but the information he provided us was very vague. It was like there was someone that wanted us to come to the Geno Hall. And I think they were asking for help, Lee Kier said. I thought that getting into the Geno Hall meant you would become a god. Why would someone inside signal for help? Hansen asked with confusion. That is what we want to find out, but we have yet to find an answer, Lee Kier said. Chapter 2671 Silkworm Bouts Begin The valley was a giant basin in outer sky. 
The entire basin was shaped like an enormous bowl, and it was ringed by unfathomably tall mountains. The landscape of the basin itself was very harsh and complicated. Every silkworm fight would take place inside this valley. Likir and Hansen reached the valley right before the silkworm fights were going to begin. When Exquisite saw them both heading toward her, she sighed in relief. She expected Hansen to lose at least one of his fights, but if he didn't participate in the contest at all, the very high would hate him even more. The time of rest was over. When the eleven silkworms entered the valley, Exquisite didn't ask anything of Hans Senator, she allowed him to proceed into the basin of combat. The moment Hansen set foot in the valley, the entire valley was sealed by a huge barrier. The Bicema would keep the destructive power of the combatants contained within the valley, but it wouldn't stop teleportation or the bodies of the contestants. If the silkworms teleported outside the seal, they would immediately lose the fight. When the silkworm fights began, few very high had come to watch the fights. Only the masters of the twelve silkworms actually showed up in person. The very high that practiced the very high sense had zero interest in such a contest, and the other members of their society had other means of spectating. There was no need for them to go all the way to the valley. Only the masters of the silkworms had to watch the fights unfold up close. They needed the proximity to gain the battle experience and knowledge of those they were watching. It finally begins. Now, if the other eleven silkworms meet Han Sen, they will do their best to fight him. As Li Xue Ching watched the stream of the fight preparations, he cackled wildly. Of course. We made Han Sen, who is only a ninth-tier king, into a powerful contender who is only second to Shale. The half-deified silkworms won't be happy about this. Even if we were nice people, this still would have put them in a competitive mood, right? Li Yuzhen squinted his eyes. Hansen might drop out before he even gets to shale, Li Xueqing agreed and nodded. After Hansen entered the valley, he wasn't in a rush to bump into another silkworm. He flew around a nearby mountain that rolled up and down. The valley was as big as a planet, but for half-deifieds or deifieds, that sort of area wasn't too big. It wouldn't be difficult for the silkworms to locate each other. Suddenly, Hansen felt an impressive surge of power up ahead. Someone was already fighting. This power. Is that you, Shanxin? As soon as Hansen felt that power, he noticed how familiar it felt. And so, he quickly headed toward where that fight was taking place. The area of combat wasn't too far away from him, and so Hansen quickly reached the outskirts of their battlefield. There, he found you, Shanxin, and a half deified of the extreme king standing on a mountain. They were watching each other. They were both utterly still. The only movement Hansen could see came from their powers, which were spilling out and shaking the mountains all around them. Hansen recognized Yushanshin's opponent. According to the information he had received, the extreme king fellow was called Gru. Although he wasn't of the same bloodline as King Bai, his king body was very strong, certainly no weaker than any of the royal children's. He had a nine armor talent, and he was a very experienced fighter. He was quite a skilled swordsman as well. At the moment, Gru was really quiet, and he was holding a steel greatsword. His body was fizzing with a powerful sword mind, and before his weapon even moved, his sword mind came for Yushanshi. It rushed forward so fast that it pushed aside the clouds and its path. Hansen frowned. Gru's sword mind was no weaker than his own. The man had reached deified class with it, for sure. He might have only been half deified, but his sword mind was remarkably developed. Gru was definitely a very powerful half deified. It was no wonder the very high had selected him as a silkworm. Yushanshin's presence was harder to anticipate. Sometimes it raged like fire, and other times it was soft like water. It made it very difficult for those watching to determine what sort of power he had. It is fortunate I'm getting to watch this fight. It means I can observe Yushanshin and see what extreme evil path can do. Hansen maintained a careful distance from the battlefield so he could observe without getting caught up in the fight. Yushanshin, I have heard you being called the strongest non-deified in the universe. I, Gru, am going to see what is so special about your extreme evil path. Gru looked at Yushanshin coldly as he spoke. Gru didn't like Yushanshin for one simple reason. The extreme king were supposed to be one of the top three races of the universe but they didn't have any half-deifieds that were as strong as Yushanshin from Sky Palace. Now, the silkworm bouts had given him a chance to fight Yushanshin. In truth, he wanted to take this opportunity to kill Yushanshin. People who say such things are too kind. 
I assure you that those comments are not true. Compared to the illustrious Extreme King, I'm nothing noteworthy. Yu Shanxin smiled coldly. Huh. Let's fight and see. Gru didn't plan on letting Yu Shanxin go that easily. His sword mind rose as he gripped his steel great sword, and a sword light spread across the sky as it headed for Yu Shanxin. The silkworm fights didn't permit the use of treasures, so the steel great sword must have been Gru's gene weapon. As the sword moved through the air, even Han Sen was surprised by its power. The extreme king's sword skills and sword mind were no worse than his own. But Han Sen didn't think a strike like this would be enough to defeat Yu Shanxin. He stared at Yu Shanxin, wanting to see how he might deal with such an attack. Yu Shanxin's body remained motionless. When the sword light came down, Yu Shanxin reached out both hands as if he wanted to catch the sword light. The sword light stopped when it encountered Yu Shanxin's hands, but the power of the strike was too great. While Yu Shanxin's hands had succeeded in stopping the attack, the raw force of the blow still knocked his body back. Ping. Yu Shanxin was pushed back through the barrier of the valley. He lost the silkworm fight. The silkworm bout had few rules, but there was one rule that all the contestants knew. Whoever left the valley first would be put in last place. Yu Shanxin had been the first to get knocked out of the valley, and so he was going to be number 12. Han Sen was befuddled. What the hell is wrong with Yu Shanxin? Gru is very strong, but there is no way Yu Shanxin is that much weaker than him. How did he get blown away by that attack? He must have done that deliberately. I cannot believe this. Even if he couldn't have reached first place, there were many rewards that he could have earned by reaching the top five. Why would he just throw everything away and give up? Gru didn't believe Yu Shanxin was that weak, either. The man had been launched beyond the seal by a single attack. But Yu Shanxin was already out of the valley, and Gru could no longer chase after him. So, the extreme king turned his head to look at Han Sr. If Yu Shanxin was too much of a chicken to fight me properly, then you can fight me. You're also from Sky Palace. After all, it will be good to test the mettle of your people. Gru looked at Han Sen's body. Han Sen hadn't expected the situation to change so quickly. Before he even realized what had happened, he had become Gru's opponent. But Han Sen made no effort to run away. He could still fall back as long as he didn't leave the valley, but Han Sen remained within range of Gru. He drew Spell's two pistols. Chapter 2672 Sword Heart Area Seeing Hansen preparing to strike, the very high who were watching the fight suddenly felt very awake. Although many of the very high were almost certain that Hansen would lose the silkworm bout, they still held out a tiny slither of hope that he would win. They prayed that maybe, even without his treasures, Hansen still harbored a bit of that OP power he had become renowned for. I would consider Gru's power to be middle of the road out of the twelve silkworms. He can be a whetstone for other silkworms to grind against, and he will be an excellent demonstration of Han Sen's strength. Li Yuzhen looked excited as he stared at the video. Li Xueqing looked nervous as he said, As long as Han Sen doesn't reach first place, anyone else can claim the metaphorical throne. I do think we may have overreached with our gamble, though. Even Open Sky Elder wagered the fabled Open Sky jewelry on Han Sen ending up in first place. That was so strange. Open Sky Elder knew this silkworm fight wouldn't allow the use of treasures. Why would he still bet on Hans and reigning supreme? If we lose, we will lose everything we have. Don't worry. It doesn't matter who bets on Hans and winning. He won't be a match for Shale, no matter what. Li Yuzhen spoke as if he was trying to assure himself as well as Li Xuecheng. The fact that Open Sky Elder had placed such a heavy bet on Hans and made them feel quite uncomfortable. At the same time, Open Sky Elder was smiling as he watched Hansen and Gru square up against each other. Li Chiyu, another very high elder, looked at Open Sky Elder and said, You really wagered the Open Sky jewelry that Hansen would win this contest? You realize that this entire event has been rigged in Shale's favor, right? I know. Open Sky Elder smiled and nodded. His expression didn't waver. If you know, then why are you doing this? You're just handing an item of immense value to Li Xueqing and Li Yuxian. Elderly Chi Yu looked at Open Sky Elder. Open Sky Elder laughed and said, You know I've always wanted the evil dragon orb that belongs to Li Yuxian's father. He guards the item quite greedily and refuses to loan it to me, though. Therefore, I had to think outside the box to come up with a way to get my mitts on it. If Li Yuxian loses this bet, will he really be able to fork over materials worth the price of the Open Sky jewelry on his own? No. Therefore, he will have to go and see his father. 
he will undoubtedly have to give up the evil dragon orb. But with Shale here, how could they lose? Chi Yu Elder couldn't understand what Open Sky Elder was thinking. What if Shale isn't fighting at full strength right now? Open Sky Elder smiled at the other man as he spoke. Not at full strength? What do you mean? Chi Yu Elder asked, entirely confused. Open Sky Elder laughed and said, Remember when Shale went to Demon Lake to hunt down Xenogenex? I had a business matter that took me there at the same time. And there, I saw Shale get his hands on something precious. What did he get from Demon Lake? Chi Yu Elder wondered out loud. Then, his eyes widened and he said hoarsely, Did he get demon fruit? Open Sky Elder nodded and laughed. I saw Shale holding the demon fruit in his own hands. And then, I watched him eat it. Chi Yu Elder looked at the valley in the video in shock. He was trying to see where Shale was. As he searched, he said, Does that mean Shale has fallen from deified status? Of course. Demon fruit is a treasure from the anti-material world. Even a born deified cannot withstand its effects. Shale has been brought down from deified to king class. The demon fruit's demon baby god can do miraculous things, and even though Shale has become king class, his potential has been increased a level. He already had a tin armor talent. So, after getting the demon fruit, he sacrificed his deified level for another armor talent. Although his 11 armor talent isn't genuine like the ones in the legends, it is still a very rare talent level. You won't find anyone else like this in the entire universe. After pausing, Open Sky Elder went on to say, Now that he's taken in the demon baby god, it will be a long time before Shale becomes a deified again. There is now a high chance that Hansen will win this fight. If you knew what had happened, why didn't you tell me sooner? If I had known, I would have increased my bet. I would have enjoyed causing more problems for Li Yuzhen and Li Xueqing. Open Sky Elder shook his head and said, I'm still gambling. Although Shale isn't deified anymore, he still has the will of a deified. I'm not sure if Han Sen can win. Plus, the other silkworms aren't weaklings, either. Fortunately, Yushanshin quit the silkworm bouts. Otherwise, Han Sen's chances of reaching first place would have been greatly decreased. Chi Yu thought about it and deduced that Open Sky Elder was most likely correct. Although Shale wasn't deified anymore, Hansen still might not be able to reach first place. Open Sky Elder wanted to make a bet, but the end of this fight was still uncertain. Gru's sword mind shook the sky. The steel great sword came slashing toward Hansen, just as it had been swung toward Yushanshin earlier. Now that Hansen was facing that attack himself, he realized just how scary it was. That sword mind was like a knife hitting the galaxy. It felt like an entire galaxy might buckle under its weight. And Hansen was opposing that strike with only his body. Yushanshin was able to use his hands to hold back that sword light. The fitness of his body couldn't be any weaker than mine. Yushanshin was a scary guy. As he considered the attack, Hansen's body moved on its own. He vanished, and Gru's attack was now slashing toward empty air. Hansen had employed God's wonder. Hansen emerged on the other side of Gru. However, the extreme king's sword light had reoriented itself and was still coming toward him. So, Hansen teleported away again. But still, Gru's sword light was able to catch up to him. He teleported a few more times, but none of his jumps shook off the pursuit of Gru's attack. Weird. How can he predict where I teleport to? Hansen thought, furrowing his brows. His god's wander wasn't as good as galaxy teleportation, but he was still very good at small distance jumps. Within a short range, he could go anywhere he wanted. He only had to think about it, and he would teleport to where he wished to be. Gru was teleporting after him and somehow managing to keep up. This fact alone was enough to prove how powerful the man was. But Hansen didn't have much information on Gru, and he didn't know what sort of powers the man wielded. He felt a bit confused about it all. Why is this happening? How can Gru predict where God's wander will take Hansen? Lee Kier was shocked, too. Exquisite frowned as she studied the two fighters. If my judgment is correct, Gru cannot predict where Hansen is teleporting to. Instead, he is tracking Hansen with his area power. Area power? Isn't Gru's area a sword area? Li Kier asked, trying to recall. In Gru's profile, it said that his area was a sword area, and his king body was sword-based. It made his sword skill stronger. It is a sword element, but it is also a very special sword area, Exquisite said. Hansen kept teleporting, but he couldn't escape Gru's sword light. He decided to teleport somewhere far away to put some distance between Gru and himself. This time, 
Gru was unable to catch up in time. Hansen immediately realized how Gru had been predicting his movements. If the man's attack had possessed some sort of automatic tracking function, as Hansen had first supposed, then the attack would have caught up with him no matter how far he traveled. You have a very powerful area. What is it called? Hansen asked, looking at Gru. He could tell that this was all the effect of Gru's area power. Sword heart area. My sword goes straight for the heart. Under the power of this area, I will sense your movements in my heart no matter where you go. In my area, no target can escape my sword heart's targeting ability. Even invisible foes and chameleons are visible to me, Gru said coldly. Chapter 2673 The Glory of One Shot most warriors in the universe were like candles, but to be silkworms of the very high were like blazing bonfires. Hansen had planned to spend more time observing Gru's sword skills, but now he had to fight. Hansen's fingers twitched, and Spell's twin pistols roared madly, rapidly spitting out bullets. The steel great sword in Gru's hands flashed like the wind, cutting each bullet in half. Not a single bullet could escape the wondrous sword lights. A heavy steel great sword spun around Gru like a bolt of pure lightning. Those are some good sword skills, Hansen complimented his opponent. Gru's skills were inferior to Lone Bamboo's talents, but Hansen appreciated the fact that these techniques were incredibly stable. Every movement was rigorously practiced and could be used with a solid stance. The man was unleashing the max potential of his skills. This was the way one should always practice their sword skills. It was a way to beat someone stronger when you were weaker or take on an opponent who had the high ground. These were the strategies that weaker people should always employ. Being solid and using real strength to crush enemies, disabling opponents to deny them the chance to fight back. That was the real way to use a sword. These aren't good sword skills, Gru said. I began practicing with a blade when I was five years old. When I reached 30, my sword skills still weren't very good. People always thought I was dumb and unsuitable for sword craft. But I have a sword king body. It would be wasted if I didn't practice with a sword. And so, I kept on training. It has now been 46 years, and my sword skills still aren't good. All I know is that I am better than my ancestors. But still, that doesn't make me good. If you are using what you have learned, believe me when I tell you that you are already quite good. Not many people can perform this well. Hansen knew that using a sword skill to its max potential was a harder feat than making a brand new sword skill. New sword skills could sometimes be created in moments of inspiration, but making perfect use of an existing sword skill, regardless of the environment, would take countless hours of practice and training. It required a lot of effort. As the two of them spoke, their hands never stopped moving. Swords flashes and gunfire rang out. They kept collided against each other time after time, with Hansen's bullets falling and Gru's sword lights unable to touch his opponent. I cannot believe this Gru is so good. His sword skills are excellent. Even amongst the very high, these sword skills have to be amongst the best. Li Xuechen chuckled. Gru was a late bloomer, Li Yuzhen said, nodding. Even though he doesn't have the speed of Pegasus, he is so stable that it's like he has weathered all the dangers of the world. If his opponent isn't considerably stronger than him, there is no way to break his sword. If the extreme king used him as a guard, their bases would be as strong as stone. It's lucky for us that Hansen ran into Gru first. With Gru's stability, he should be able to squeeze Hansen out of every ounce of his power. Even if Gru loses, other silkworms will know what to expect from Hans Senator they'll know his powers, and he'll be worn out. Li Xuechen felt at ease now. Some distance away stood a man with the head of a lion and the body of a human. He was staring at Hansen and Gru as they conducted their battle. It looks like Hansen isn't as talented as the legends proclaim. Without treasure, that guy is pretty much worthless. A fox woman laughed as she walked up next to Shale. Shale looked serious as he said, Gru's sword skill is King Path Sword, yet Hansen is fighting him without exposing his moves. That alone proves how strong he is. Even my ninth tier king body might expose my movements to the half deified Gru. The fox woman laughed and said, You've only fallen to king class. Did your ball shrink, as well? Where did the fearless Shale go? Hmm. Have you seen him? Even Hansound, who is just a ninth tier king, can make you react this seriously? I embody the destiny of the lion heart. I do everything I can with the utmost precision and care. I might lose, but I will not fail due to my own negligence, Shale said in a hard voice. The fox woman rolled her eyes. She looked at Shale and said, Anyway, 
What do you make of Hansen's power? Can he defeat Gru? Gru is strong, but Hansen can beat him, Shale answered. If Gru is strong, why would Hansen win? Foxwoman asked, looking interested. He might win or he might lose. Shell spoke those six words and stopped talking. What about you? Which of you is stronger? You or Hansen? The fox woman looked at Shale, trying to see through his thoughts. Shale didn't move. We have never fought before. So, who can tell what will happen? On the battlefield, Hansen and Gru had performed a thousand moves against each other. But still, Hansen had yet to find a way to beat Gru. Hansen had to admit that Gru was too stable for him. Hansen started to think that if he kept fighting like this, he would die of old age before he found the man's flaws. It seemed impossible to beat Gru through skill. If agility doesn't seem to work against him, then it looks like I'll have to approach this more directly. Hansen teleported away, establishing some distance between him and Gru. Gru, I really admire your sword skills, but we have to determine a winner between us. Therefore, I am sorry. Hansen lifted Spell's guns and took aim at Gru. Use all the moves you are able to. Gru gripped his steel greatsword tightly. His face looked placid. It was as if even the sky breaking or the earth shattering would not move him. Hansen and the Extreme King were enemies, but Hansen still admired his foe. Gru was a strong character, and if he became a leader among the Extreme King, their race would gain a great deal. What a shame. The Extreme King are controlled by King Bai. Gru will have no chance, Hansen thought to himself. He aimed spell at Gru and pulled the trigger. Ping. A bullet tore out of the gun with a shriek that sounded like space itself beginning to tear. The bullet was headed straight for Gru, and Gru was frozen. He had held the sword with one hand previously, but now he carefully gripped it with two. He shouted and brought the steel great sword above his head to swing it down on the bullet. A sword light glared with blinding intensity as it hit the bullet. The sword strike found its target, but the bullet didn't split in half. Instead, it exploded. Boom. It was like a hydrogen bomb detonating. Looking at it was like staring straight into the sun. It covered Gru and most of the land. When the explosion finally faded, a huge hole had been torn into the mountain. Gru was lying in the crater, soaked in blood. His limbs were all gone, and wounds covered every inch of his body that remained. What frightening power. The audience was shocked. A ninth-tier king had used his pure power to defeat the half-deified Gru. That was astonishing. Chapter 2674, One Fighting For The Fox Woman Side You were right. Gru is very stable, but he lacks the sheer power needed to beat stronger enemies. He couldn't topple an opponent who had the high ground. He can't be beaten by anyone weaker than him, but when he meets an opponent who is stronger than he is, he lacks the ingenuity to find a way to take them down. It looks like Hansen is stronger than I thought. Even if I was half deified, I don't think I would be able to suppress him with my current power, Shell said thoughtfully. Hansen looked down on the bloody but not yet dead Gru. He was going to finish him with a final shot. He wasn't on good terms with the Extreme King, and someone like Gru would definitely be used against him. It would only lead to trouble further down the line. He knew he would need to finish the man off then and there. But before Hansen could do anything, a shadow appeared next to the heavily wounded Gru. The man looked at Hansen, grabbed Gru, and disappeared, teleporting away from the battlefield. Hansen didn't need to guess. He knew that the very high who had taken Gru away was the same man who had signed a contract with him. What a shame, Hansen thought to himself. Hansen really is a legendary dude. The power of one bullet was enough to harm Gru like so. To be honest, it should make us feel embarrassed, said an approaching figure. When Hansen turned around, though, he saw more than one person. There were three people following the speaker. What do you guys want? Hansen asked, looking at the four people. He had seen them in the information booklet he had been given. The leader of the crew was from the Extreme King. Of the remaining three, one was Extreme King, and the other two belonged to other races. If they had been taken on as silkworms, though, then it was obvious they weren't foes that Hansen could take lightly. You are strong but we want to get a good ranking. So, we will have to ask you to leave the valley, the leading extreme king man said. After that, the four silkworms surrounded Han Sr. Although the very high never suggested that silkworms should team up, cooperative fights weren't forbidden, and there were no rules stating that silkworms should fight one-on-one. -on -one. If things had to be one-on-one -on -one at all times, there would have been no reason to stick all twelve silkworms in a single valley. 
the very high didn't only want to learn from the fighting experience of their silkworms. They wanted to learn what would happen to the mind during heated exchanges, so they could determine which effects were useful and which were not. It would help the very high determine how to conduct themselves in the future. Are you going to leave with your head held high? Or are we going to have to send you home in a body bag? A manis man asked Hansen snidely. Hansen laughed and said, You think you can bully me because you outnumber me? Hansen, are you naive enough to believe we will fight you one-on-one? -on -one? The manis man said with a disdainful look on his face. He and Hansen were both from small races. Despite that commonality, Hansen was a famous fellow all across the universe. Even amongst the very high, he was considered a figure of much prestige. The Manus Man's background was similar to Han Sen's, but he had never spent time in the limelight. That lack of fame led to him hating Han Sen quite a lot. It isn't like that. I'm just giving you a little advice. If you want to bully me, for if you won't be enough, you should go and enlist a few others before you push your luck, Han Sen said quietly. What idiocy. Come on then. Show us. Show us how good you believe you are, the Manus Man grunted coldly, as a purple and red manis arm suddenly broke through the fabric of space. It slashed forward, hurtling down on Hans Sr. The manis man had space power. Wherever the manis man's arm went, a long mark was left in its wake. Hansen fell back, but he felt as if the space his body occupied had become distorted. Although he had moved nearly a thousand meters, the manis man was no farther away from him. Hansen frowned. He looked to the side and he saw an extreme king person unleashing a weird area power. He thought it must have been the area power that was distorting the dimensions around him. As the Manus arm came down, Hansen used Spell's two pistols to take aim at the Manus scythe. Dong! It shouldn't have been difficult to counter the Manus arm with Hansen's power, but when they struck each other, Hansen felt a surprising amount of power coming against him. He stumbled back a few steps, and his hands ached. He almost lost the tight grip he was keeping on those two pistols. Hansen's eyes flicked back to the Manus. A weird, gold light was covering the Manus arm. That gold light was shining on all four half-deified, actually. One of the extreme king was glowing especially brightly. That was undoubtedly his area power. Before Hansen could react, there was an arrow headed toward him. It was a half-deified from the Aichi. The Aichi were born archers, so their talents with a bow were exemplary. Hansen was fighting four people alone, which put him at a considerable disadvantage. The four half-deified fighters were all using their special powers in conjunction. The Manus Man had a rare space power that could break space with a scythe that was practically indestructible. One of the extreme king fighters could manipulate space, whereas the other could buff the bodies of his companions. They restricted Hansen's movements while also making their bodies stronger. The Aichi Archer was the icing on the cake. He had a scary proficiency with the bow. He kept harassing Hansen from afar, and his area could buff the speed of the other three. Because space was sometimes shortened or lengthened, the distance Hansen kept between himself and his enemies was no longer reliable. The attacks that he could evade were now no longer avoidable. The distances at which he could attack the enemy were made longer, keeping him from touching them. Although Hansen is strong, the other silkworms are very strong, too. He is fighting four people all alone. Even I, a very high, cannot do that. He is just one Hansen, Li Yuzhen coldly said. Li Kier and Exquisite weren't too worried because they could sense Hansen's heart. Although it seemed that Hansen was being oppressed and restrained at every turn, they could feel that Hansen's heart was like a quiet well. There was a lot of confidence inside him. Although they hadn't yet figured out where Hansen's coincidence came from, they knew Hansen's situation wasn't as dire as it seemed. An arrow was flying right toward Hansen's face, and a sword light was coming at Hansen's waist. The Manus arm and Spell's pistol collided, sending Hansen back a few hundred meters. Every second of the engagement put Hansen in a new life and death situation. It seemed that if the Manus man and the others worked just a little harder, they could defeat Hans Sr. The battle raged furiously. Hansen was attacked by many areas, knife lights, and sword shadows, and despite it all, he kept blocking everything that was thrown at him. He was countering the attacks of four people. In the beginning, those Hansen's four attackers had the advantage, but as time passed, they realized with shock that their restraints on Hansen were becoming weaker and weaker. They could no longer keep him contained within their areas. In the end, Hansen was easily engaging all four of them at the same time. 
He was able to attack and defend as he pleased. This guy's battle talents are too scary, the fox woman said. She was watching Hansen fight, stunned. Each of the four silkworms was just as strong as she was, but Hansen could fight all four of them with stability. And he was only a ninth tier king. Chapter 2675 Fighting the Manis Across the Mountains I have only heard that the crystallizes were smart. I would never have believed that their bodies have grown this strong, the fox woman said with shock. That isn't the entirety of his power. His physical strength is just one aspect of his abilities. He isn't some brainless creature that is tossing his entire strength into this fight, Shale said. Do you think you will still be able to defeat him? The fox woman looked at Shale with interest. I won't lose. Shale looked the same as he always did when saying this. The four half-deifieds had no idea what to do. They were all fighting Hansen, but they couldn't beat him. And on top of that, he was gaining the upper hand. They were the best of the half-deifieds, and they all possessed remarkable power. Normally, they could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any half-deified in the universe. Now, however, they were losing a four-on-one fight, and their opponent was only a ninth-tier king. To say they were shocked would be an understatement. Likir and Exquisite were in shock, as well. They could feel Hansen's strength. They could also experience what it was like to be in his shoes, fighting in the way he was. The strange thing was that Hansen had no interest in simply fighting with his Geno arts and his body. It was more like he was playing a game of chess. Watching him play was easy, and each individual move was simple. Yet assembling all those moves together to replicate his overall strategy would be very difficult. You still had to practice it yourself. This method of fighting is quite similar to the very high sense, but Hanson has only learned under the sky. He hasn't even read the whole of the textless book, and yet, he can do all this. His talent is scary to behold, Lee Kier said. Exquisite nodded with glee and said, This is a good thing. This will actually help us develop our proficiency with the very high sense. This is something other silkworms can never do. Ping. A bullet struck the arm of the Manus Man and exploded with the scary power of Break Six Guys. It blew the Manus Man away. Even his exoskeleton was covered in cracks, and blood started to seep out of them. These four weren't like Gru. There were flaws in how they fought. Hansen finally found an opportunity to create a distance between him and his enemies. His spell pistols began to fire without reprieve. For most of the fight, Hansen had been too close to them to use Break Six Guys. He had been afraid he would blow himself up, so he used less destructive Geno arts to fuel his bullets. But now that he had some distance, he no longer had to worry about injuring himself. The bullet was fired. A scary power exploded close to the four half-deifieds. They threw their arms over their heads and ran away like rats. They no longer dared to get close to Han Sr. A bullet infused with the power of break six guys wasn't something they would risk trying to withstand. They didn't dare to continue the fight now. They ran as fast as they could, trying to leave the radius from which Hansen could attack them. Hansen didn't pursue them, though. He waited until they were far enough away, then put his hands together. He combined the two spell pistols and transformed them into a sniper rifle. Hansen raised the gun and took aim at the Manus Man. He pulled the trigger. Pang. A bullet flew through the air, and the Manus Man felt the power coming toward him. He knew he couldn't use his arms to block it. He had only been able to use his Manus arm to repel Hansen's power earlier due to the boons provided by the Extreme King area. But now, all of his allies had fled the scene. None of them dared to fight Hansen without the buffs and boons of each other's areas. Wings suddenly spread from the Manus man's back, taking him a kilometer away in an instant. He thought he had successfully dodged the bullet, but the bullet turned in the air and followed him. It even seemed to be accelerating. The Manus Man's face paled. He began to loop and twist through the air. No matter what he did, though, Hansen's attack followed him like a heat-seeking bullet. Its speed increased steadily as it pursued him. It was going to catch up and hit the Manus Man at any second. The Manus Man gritted his teeth and took refuge behind a mountain. He turned to stare at the mountain behind him. Ping! The bullet punched straight through the mountain without exploding. In an instant, it was in front of the Manus Man. The Manus Man had braced himself for the bullet to blow up the mountain, but the bullet had gone through intact. He was shocked. The Manus Man crossed his arms in front of himself. He poured more power into his defenses than he ever had before, then unleashed a scary power to counter the incoming bullet. Ping. 
The bullet pierced through the indestructible Manus' arms, then carried on straight into the Mantis Man's head. Then his head exploded. As the Mantis Man fell to the ground, the other silkworms in the audience felt their stomachs churn. The Mantis Man was one of the most powerful half-deifieds in existence. Hansen had shot and killed him while he was trying his hardest to escape. That bullet was so strange and so powerful that it made those who saw it feel shocked. What Geno armament does he have? Why is it so weird? How is it so strong? It went through the mountain in the Manus arms and still killed the Manus. Li Xuecheng frowned. It does not matter how strong he is. He still isn't as strong as a deified. Li Yuzhen's scowling face betrayed the desperation of his words. Open Sky Elder laughed and said, such power puts him close to being deified. It might not have seemed possible for him to beat Shale before, but Shale has been reduced to king class. With Hansen exhibiting a power like this, there is a good chance he can win. Everyone was shocked by Hansen's frightening bullet. The other three half deifieds ran faster than ever. They were afraid of Hansen shooting them, too. What they didn't know was that Hansen lacked the power to fire a second attack like that. He only wanted to try out the power of heart connection. Hansen had exhausted all his strength in doing so, though. He lacked what was needed to repeat that performance. Mutant Xenogeneic King hunted. Break Space Manus. Mutant Xenogeneic Gene found. Obtain Mutant Break Space Manus Beast Soul. I'm just a beginner with the skill, but heart connection is that powerful already? It is a shame that this Geno art costs too much power. I will need to rest for a while after using it. It will be some time before I can use it again. Although Hansen heard the Beast Soul announcement, he didn't dare to pay it much heed. He knew he was being watched by Exquisite and Likir. Breakspace Manus' body was taken away by a very high woman, so Hansen had no chance to collect the Xenogeneic gene from him. Considering the power I've just demonstrated with that bullet, there should be no other silkworms coming to bother me for a while, Hansen thought to himself. Then, all of a sudden, someone else appeared. Shale? Likir and Exquisite, upon seeing that body, jolted in their seats. They knew Hansen was exhausted. He needed time to recover. He couldn't continue fighting, but Shale was right there in front of him. Upon seeing Shale, Hansen laughed and said, Are you that desperate to fight me? How long must you rest to get your power back? Shale asked Hans Sr. Ten hours, Hansen answered. Good. I will let you rest safely for the next ten hours. If anyone else draws near, I will get rid of them. Shale sat down nearby. He had blonde hair and a square face. It looked so strong and heroic.